We're in this together. The passage of time. The repeating patterns. The changes. And together, we celebrate the promise of hope a new season brings by honoring traditions, respecting leaders, remembering champions, a ritual hard to resist or replace, while we raise our voices for a game that brings us and keeps us together through the years, the circle is unbroken. Fall is here. And so is college football. We are back on campus with a showdown in the ACC. From Raleigh, North Carolina, the Wolfback of NC State, most potential national title contender, Virginia Tech, a preseason ranking of eight, its highest ever. And hi, everybody. Dave Pash, Trevor Maddish, and Rod Gilmore. Guys, this might be the biggest game ever at Carter Finley Stadium here in Raleigh. Virginia Tech lost only one game last year in the ACC en route to a regular season championship and that was in Blacksburg to this North Carolina State team as the Wolfpack takes the field to get ready for the 2005 season. ACC looks a little bit different in 2005. Two divisions, the Atlantic Division and the Coastal Division, the two winners of the divisions will meet on December 3rd in Jacksonville and the ACC Championship game. Also, guys, in this game tonight, an abundance of talent, and we stress the word abundance. You look at the defensive lines for these two schools, two of the best in college football. You've got Jimmy Williams, maybe the best corner in college football, Virginia Tech, and a return to college football of a huge name, Vic makes his first college started quarterback that would be Marcus Vick tonight for Virginia Tech yeah, and, and the question is can Marcus be like Mike that, that's the question out there and you know who Mike is he was the guy that oh years ago at Virginia Tech led them to a national championship game before becoming the top pick in the draft and the star quarterback for the Falcons and his brother has picked up a little bit of his talent and as a matter of fact he looks just like him height weight just about identical speed they both have it one throws left one throws right yes Marcus has accuracy he has a strong arm but Trevor he has not played in over a year he was suspended last season and he's never started a game he's got to find a way to be patient since he's a little bit rusty well he better be patient because North Carolina State returns its all-world defensive ends from last year's number one ranked defense Mario Williams combination of power and speed Manny Lawson has wide receiver speed in a defensive ends body Vic had better have his head on a swivel because big danger comes from both sides. Many returning players for NC State this year. They'll be playing in a stadium that has undergone $40 million worth of changes. Also some coaching changes. We'll find out about that next. Welcome back to Raleigh. ACC football on opening weekend. And it's time now to bring in the fourth member of our crew. We welcome in once again Stacy Dale Schumann. Stace? Thanks, Dave. You know, NC State has seen its share of coaching turnover under head coach Chuck Amato. In the past five years, they've lost 10 assistant coaches, three O coordinators, and two defensive coordinators. And after last season, that trend would only continue. Chuck Amato brought in defensive coordinator Steve Dunlap, 24 years experience. But the defense he inherited needed very little change because it was the number one ranked defense in the country. However, on the other side of the ball, guys, plenty of change was necessary since NC State turned the ball over more than anybody else in the ACC. Mark Trestman was hired. Chuck Amato said, do what you want with my offense. And the thing he likes most about him, guys, 46 years combined experience. And they called him. They want to be here. And Dunlap coached for many years against Virginia Tech when he was the defensive coordinator at West Virginia. And then last year at Syracuse was also a position coach at Syracuse prior to be named 
defensive coordinator last year. We are ready to start the season in the ACC. One of the better matchups of the weekend, NC State against defending ACC champ Virginia Tech. We're underway from Carter Finley Stadium. And the opening kick will go through the end zone, a touchback. And Virginia Tech will start at the 20 yard line. The Marcus Vick era begins, played in 11 games two years ago, suspended in 2004, both athletically and academically, in May of last year, pled guilty to contributing to the delinquency of minors, serving alcohol to teenage girls, and then in July, pleaded no contest to reckless driving and marijuana possession. Spent most of last year with his brother Michael in Atlanta. Marcus says he's reformed, he's matured, and ready to be the leader for this Virginia Tech football team. And the Hokies start from their 20. Mike Eno is the running back. And Eno stumbles to the ground. Loss of a yard on the opening play. Good skill people for Virginia Tech. Maybe their best receiving core ever. Hyman, Emo, Humes, Royal, and King. A terrific tight end. And the offensive line. You've got Martin, a veteran. Gore in his first start. Montgomery, Murphy, and sophomore Dwayne Brown. 17 days ago converted from tight end to tackle. And he is smaller than the man that he will go up against most of the night tonight. Left defensive end Mario Williams at 6'7", 290 for NC State. On second and 11, toss sweep Emo. Tough to get to the outside against this speedy NC State defense. Marcus Hudson runs him down. And the defense for NC State. Four new starters in the secondary. You got Scott Hudson and Davis. Heath as well. Garland Heath, a junior from Florida. Rump, Hoyt, and Tulloch. Hoyt, the leading tackler last year, and then this terrific front four. Williams, McCargo, Presley, and Lawson. Everybody talks about Williams and Lawson. McCargo under the radar screen a little bit. This is where Marcus Vick has to be patient. His defense is very opportunistic. Out of the shotgun on third and ten, play clock winding down. And Vick, his first run of 2005, and he picks up about five, but nowhere near the marker. Manny Lawson, who's almost as fast as Vick. Lawson runs a 4-4, tracks down Vick. Well, this is a straight run. They don't want him to have to throw the ball on his first third and long, and Lawson is able to come inside. He's got wide receiver speed. Nobody's as fast as Vick, but Lawson is fast enough to make that play. Nick Schmidt to boot it away on fourth down and an excellent kick. And it goes over the head of Hall and Virginia Tech downs it. At the 17 yard line, Roland Miner getting down there to tag it for the Hokies. Well, North Carolina State last year lost several offensive linemen and two years ago a quarterback. The second all-time leading passer in the NCAA, Phillip Rivers, replaced last year by Jay Davis, who was second in the ACC in passing but threw more interceptions than touchdowns and was actually pulled in the second half of their win over Virginia Tech and Blacksburg. From the 17-yard line, NC State. In motion is Darrell Blackman. They go empty on first down. It'll be Blackman in the flat. And Blackman is taken down after a gain of three at the 20 by D.J. Parker making his first start tonight. Williams led the team in receiving in 2004. Barrett, Clark, and Blackman, one of possibly six tailbacks we will see tonight. And the offensive line Herndon is the lone senior. Morrison Newby a tackle and guard turn center Leroy Harris who missed the last four games a season ago with a shoulder injury. Second and six. Davis to the air. Taken off. And Davis level at the 21 yard line by Xavier Adibi. Take a look at the Virginia Tech defense. Jimmy Williams, one of the best corners in all of college football, came back for a senior season. Roland Miner and D.J. Parker. 
an eight-man front for Virginia Tech. We mentioned at Evie's name, Vince Hall, another sophomore. That's terrific. Anderson and Rouse are in the front four. Very good. Chris Ellis, along with Powell, Jonathan Lewis, and Daryl Tapp, who had eight and a half sacks a year ago. Lewis might be the best defensive tackle in the nation. Davis dumps it off. Very close to the marker at the 27-yard line is Brian Clark before he's taken down by Chris Ellis. Are you guys surprised that NC State is coming out throwing the ball? Well, not if you know Mark Tressman, who's the new offensive coordinator. You take a look, Trevor, at last year's numbers. Well, and Mark Tressman does want to throw it. He doesn't believe necessarily in balance. He believes in moving the ball with the players he's got. And so the passing game he espouses is short passes make the big plays with yards after the catch. Tressman spent 17 years in the NFL on eight different coaching staffs, was offered the offensive coordinator job at the Saints, turned it down to come to college. Davis, and that pass incomplete. Lamar Barrett, the intended receiver. Coverage by Aaron Rouse. Well, Mark Tressman, if you followed his history, he was the offensive coordinator for the Raiders when they went to the Super Bowl and lost to Tampa Bay. And during that season, he had a couple of occasions where they almost did not run a play other than a pass. Well, in the 65, 70 passes. In the 2003 AFC Championship game, Raiders against the Tennessee Titans, the first 40 plays, 38 passes. What's interesting, though, as the coaches told us, the strength of this team is their running backs, not the receivers, yet they are up coming out throwing the ball here. They do hand it off on second down as Blackman works his way forward past the 30 to the 31-yard line, tripped up by James Anderson, a terrific linebacker, another pro prospect in this game. The Tressman's offense will use the running backs in the passing game. Think of the 49ers where he coached with the West Coast offense. He will split them out and line them up in the slot in addition to coming out of the backfield. Davis to throw on third down and six has time. And the catch made by Clark. First down, NC State. Xavier Adibi with the tackle. Trevor, you mentioned the West Coast offense, which is really the Bill Walsh offense, and that's where Tressman le learned it. He learned it from Bill Walsh, a disciple of his, believes in spreading the field, taking some shots down the field. He believes in using a tight end and using his backs in the passing game. NC State quickly to the line, first down from the 40-yard line. Again, they go empty, and the quick hitter over the middle to the tight end, T.J. Williams, for about five yards. Rouse with the tackle. And you want to talk about or notice this change in North Carolina State. Last year, it was T.A. McClendon left, T.A. McClendon right. They ran the ball almost 70% 70, 70 of the time. Tressman joined the West Coast Offense Fraternity back in 1995, and he replaced Mike Shanahan at San Francisco as the offensive coordinator. He had been out of the NFL for three years selling bonds in Florida. Second down and four after a gain of six. Another pass play. Davis finds Tremaine Hall who two years ago caught 69 balls. Last year was banged up, could hardly walk in one game, still caught 28 passes. Well, this is another feature of Mark Tressman's version of the West Coast offense. They had four receivers bunched up on the left, and then they all burst out in different directions, and Hall was the one who caused the confusion. Miner didn't see him go out to the outside and was late to react. Well, and Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, expected to see a lot of shifting a lot of movement and he wants to take the first series or so and figure out what Tressman is doing before making his adjustments we haven't seen any blitzing yet from Virginia Tech running play that's going nowhere the speed of the Hokies defense to the ball carrier a DB is there first takes Blackman down along with Blackman's helmet. That's three tackles already for Adibi, the younger brother of former Hokie Nathaniel Adibi. Well, Tressman has known Chuck Amato for about 20 years. When Tressman was an assistant at Miami, Amato a longtime assistant at Florida State. Great respect for one another as longtime assistant coaches. Amato getting a chance to be a head coach six years ago. And Amato never had a losing season at NC State until last year when a Wolfpack went five and six, losing four of their last five. And a timeout called by Davis here on second down. So a good drive for NC State. The opening series of the game for the Wolfpack offense and head coach Chuck Amato looking to right the ship in 2005. Back in Raleigh, no score. Virginia Tech has a very fast defense. 
State wants to slow them down, make them think. They go to an unusual formation so that Virginia Tech has to think and they don't react. It also creates space. Why bother blocking them if you can split them out? Seven guys out here so that T.J. Williams can come underneath and try to catch a ball on the run in space. The problem was the official kind of got in the way. He had to slow down. Tenth play of the opening drive for NC State. Under nine to play in the opening quarter. The Hokies went three and out. The Tech and NC State moving the ball. Sweet to Blackman. Trying to get the corner on the near side, and it's cut off at the 41 by D.J. Parker. His second stop already. Blackman replacing T.A. McClendon. Rod talked about him. McClendon left early, was not drafted. Probably left in part because after Blackman, the coaches say that there are five number two running backs, and three of those are true freshmen. Yeah, they've got a couple of freshmen who did some outstanding things in high school. We may see Tony Baker, Andre Brown before this ball game is over, and they are talented. Wolfpack two for two on this drive on third down. They go shotgun here on third and six. Davis hit as he releases it, and a penalty flag down. It was over the head of Blackman, but a DB is going to get a call for pass interference. And this is about matchups. You see the pass interference call. They want to get their backs and receivers on linebackers like Adibi. And that time, they got the matchup. They got Blackman out of the backfield on Adibi. And that should be an advantage for Blackman, as it was. One of the great early games in college football. Virginia Tech ranked eighth in the country against NC State at Carter Finley Stadium. Sold out. Dave Pash, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, Stacey Dale Schumann. NC State with 42 yards on this drive after a three and out for the Hokies. Marcus Vick. We'll see him the next time Virginia Tech takes the football. He did not throw a pass in his first drive. And it's a flea flicker. Davis, and everybody's covered. Has to dump it off short into three. Williams couldn't hang on to it. Excellent reaction by a very well-coached Virginia Tech defense. And note that that's the first time they set up a play to go down the field. All of the passes have been short, high percentage, designed not necessarily to push the ball deep, but designed to not turn it over. It's hard to go 15 plays down the field on this defense and get a score. But Foster's too good with his defense on that. Tressman understands that, and he's going to take shots every now and again. Virginia Tech number two in the country in scoring defense last year, under 13 points per game. Second and ten. Blackman. The phenom from Hampton, Virginia, 6'3", 215 pounds, runs a sub 4'4", and he's a cornerback. Well, you know, they play him on the short side, what they call the boundary corner, because they like to get him involved in the run game. He's about 215 pounds. He can beat blocks, and he can make good tackles. He's, he's a guy who could be a Thorpe Award winner as the best defensive back in college football. Led the ACC in picks last year with five, all ACC first team. Third down and 17 at the 43. Davis changing it up. Here comes a blitz. It's picked up, and Davis has a man. Clark very close to the marker at the 25-yard line. Second catch for Clark, who had 33 last year. Well, Mark Tressman saw that for the first time, Virginia Tech blitzed on that last play. Now take a look here. They're going to blitz again up the middle, and that's going to allow some space for the receiver to come open across the middle. That's anticipation by Tressman seeing now that Virginia Tech is beginning to get more aggressive. 17-yard gain and a first down from the 25. Blackman with a hole. Keeps his balance. Blackman inside the 10. Touchdown, North Carolina State. Duro Blackman. There is a penalty flag down after the play. Blackman took his helmet off. 
What an opening drive under Mark Tressman for North Carolina State. Well, you can't script it any better than this. Watch him as he cuts back to his left. A huge hole inside. And DJ Parker, 25, the safety coming inside, overruns the play. And that allows Blackman to get outside. 14 plays, 83 yards, 25-yard run by the speedy sophomore, Darrell Blackman. An unsportsmanlike conduct penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. John Duraney, on for the PAT. Couldn't have started better for the Wolfpack. 7-0, NC State leads. Michael Vick getting ready for the NFL season with the Hokies. His younger brother, Marcus, returns to the field for his second series when we return to Raleigh. Welcome back to Raleigh. They have picked up the flag, called a celebration penalty, but you'll see the helmet came off on accident. It was not purposely taken off as a means of showboating by Blackman, so they pick up the flag, and Frank Beamer was irate at that call. He has since calmed down. A mild-mannered man normally, Beamer, in his 19th year. What a job he's done at Virginia Tech. The ACC Coach of the Year in 2004 has a tendency to lose his temper on occasion, as you see here. Uh, he thought there was a little bit of home cooking there when the flag was picked up, but as you saw from the replay, it was an accidental knocking off of the helmet. Three for three and third down on that drive, along with a first down that they got because of a penalty on Virginia Tech. And talk about adding pressure to Marcus Vick, who already has a, a lot on his shoulders in his first collegiate start. He trails 7-0. Another excellent kickoff, and Royal will take an E. Second straight series in which Virginia Tech will start at the 20. You know, Dave, that first series with Marcus Vick was very conservative. Two handoffs and a draw play for him. They didn't ask him to get to the perimeter. They didn't ask him to throw the ball. Now that they're down by seven, and now that he's got a series under his belt, I expect them to give him a little bit more room. I think they will, but they, it'll be interesting to see how they protect it. His brother, Michael Vick, has got hit a lot by trying to do a lot in third and long situations. And so they need to stay out of third and long so Marcus doesn't get it that way, too. Michael Warren, number seven of Virginia Tech. Marcus wearing number five, play fake first pass of the year for Vick. And it's caught by Clowney for a gain of six out to the 26-yard line. Well, nobody really can quite understand what Marcus Vick must have been going through. Michael Vick saying that he always did everything for Marcus, spoiled him, practically gave him everything he wanted, and you do that for a person, they go wild. Quote, you get yourself caught up in bad situations, and you start to feel like Mr. Untouchable. Well, you have to remember when, when Marcus Vick arrived on campus, it was cause for celebration. He was really it, and everybody expected him to be the next Michael. And when a quarterback who's never started a game is driving a nicer car than anybody else on campus because of uh, the gifts from Michael, it's easy to get a big head. Here's Vic overthrowing the tight end. There is a penalty flag down on the near side of the defensive backfield. Yeah, that, that nice car was a BMW 745, which will get some attention. And Frank Beamer has a story about recruiting these guys that can just illustrate the difference and the change in the lifestyle between Michael and Marcus. When, when Beamer was recruiting Michael, the Vick family lived in a tough part of town. Not easy, not an easy life for him. His mom was working a couple jobs. Personal foul. The face mask. Number three. Cards automatic. First down. When Beamer went back, to recruit Marcus by that time Michael had been in the NFL and the family had hit the lottery I and mean, they were living in a mansion and Marcus had a lot more things than Michael did and that's what Michael's talking about when he says that well Marcus got a lot of stuff and he just enjoyed it and went wild imagine the change for Frank Beamer seeing it through his eyes going into the Vic home back in the late 90s and then going in three years ago and going from as Rod said a bad part of town in Newport News to a mansion and a mom who no longer needed to work two jobs and drive a bus just to pay for food. Terrific run by Cedric Humes of about 10 yards. Oliver Hoyt, the leading tackler last year, makes the stop on six foot one, 235 pounds, Cedric Humes. So if you're Frank Beamer, 
and you have a Michael Vick and you go through that situation with him and then you see Marcus going down that path you have to deal with it and, and Beamer talked to Michael he talked to Michael about his suspending Marcus what he needed to do to get him back on the right track and they were all on the same page to get it done under six to play seven nothing NC State Virginia Tech in Wolfpack territory emo on the carry emo with room and he's finally twirled down to the 44 by Stephen Tuller. Mike Emo was also involved in one of the incidents with Marcus. He was suspended a few games, involved in the guilty plea to contributing to the delinquency of minors in April of 2004. And Emo and Marcus at the time were roommates. Well, Marcus now lives by himself. He's got an apartment by himself, and the players say he's pretty much a homebody. But he has earned the respect of his teammates by his work ethic, came into the spring as the number three quarterback and legitimately won the job. Vic to throw, and it's tipped and incomplete. He was trying for Josh Morgan. Miguel Scott in the area. The second with Stacy, who's got more on Marcus Vic. Yeah, Dave, I spoke with center Will Montgomery, and he said exactly what you just said. He earned the respect of his teammates because he took care of business in the offseason. He was one of the hardest workers, if not the hardest worker, in the weight room, guys. And again, not to excuse at all what happened there. Clearly, Marcus made several mistakes, but not many people know what it's like to be 18, 19 years old and be taken care of for life, regardless of what you do on the field. Here's Justin Harper on the reception and a Virginia Tech first out of the 33-yard line. Jimmy Sutton with a tackle. But this is where I think he's earned the most respect because look at the, the fork in the road that Marcus Vick had. He's suspended by his team. He's going to miss last season anyway. He could transfer. Instead, he humbles himself. He comes back and does everything that Frank Beamer asked him to do. He kept his head down, and he earned the respect of his team on the field and in the classroom instead of getting up in attitude and leaving. Played in 11 games, Tread, two years ago as both a quarterback and receiver. This is his first start tonight at quarterback. It's Humes on first down, and he is ripped down to the 32-yard line. John McCargo, the terrific defensive tackle, who had 14 tackles for a loss last year on the stop. Hey, Trevor, as you watch Marcus Vick on the field, you notice something about him that was a little different, I think, than Marcus Vick. He is incredibly accurate on the mid-range pass. Michael threw a wonderful deep ball as a freshman, but I think Marcus has a little better touch on that intermediate pass at this stage. They both run sub 4 340s. Both have strong arms. Marcus is right handed. Michael is left handed. And here's Marcus to the air, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Mario Williams, who's been compared to Julius Peppers, who might be the best defensive player in all the NFL, with a big play on defense for NC State. Well, you've got a guy who's 6'7", 209. Look, he completely obliterates the picture of Vic. As we look at him, that means that Vic's picture downfield was obliterated by the huge red jersey of number nine. Third down and nine. Virginia Tech with four receivers from the 32. NC State coming. It's picked up, and Vick's got a man. Josh Morgan still on his feet inside the tent. And Morgan with great feet takes it to the five-yard line before Scott finally wraps him up. Missed tackle by J.J. Jones. Gave Morgan about another 10 yards. We talked about accuracy. Look where the ball is. The receiver can turn up field. He can do something after the catch. Right tackle, Dwayne Brown used to be a tight end as of just two weeks ago. And yet he blocks Mario Williams just enough to allow that pass to get off. Yeah, Vic isn't the only one making a debut tonight, so to speak, as Dwayne Brown makes his first start at tackle. Emo on first down, trying to get to the outside. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. <laughs> And Marcus Vick leads the Hokies right back down the field. I think he handled the pressure pretty well, huh, guys? 
Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of leadership right there. When your team falls behind and you come back calm and cool, you make good throws, you get your team in there, and you have a guy in the backfield like Emo who can stutter step, freeze a guy, and go in the opposite direction. Now, Emo is tiny, but he's so quick he can get the full speed in one step. We thought we were going to have a little scoring game after a 17-16 affair last year. We've already got a total of 14 points scored late in the first quarter after Vic takes the Hokies down the field, much to the applause of his brother Michael. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime, brought to you by State Farm. It's no accident that State Farm insures more cars than anyone else. And Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's forward. Toyota, moving forward. So the Hokies come back after a 14-play, 83-yard drive of the nine-play, 80-yard drive of their own engineered by Marcus Vick. Rushing touchdown for Mike Emo and Vic, three out of five for 44 yards on that drive. One thing they said about Michael when he was in college, he just had tremendous poise, great feel for the game, and you could see some of that on that drive, couldn't you? Well, they're both competitors, and that comes across. Jared Develli. And Blackman will let it go into the end zone. There is a penalty flag down at midfield. Five yards, re kick. And Virginia Tech will have to kick it again. Now we talked uh, last week with Frank Beamer and his coaching staff. There's great loyalty at Virginia Tech. Beamer has had opportunities to leave, but he's in his 19th year. Well, you see, he's pretty upset right now because that's his team out there. He's the coach of the special teams. And he doesn't want any mistake out there. He tries to set the tone with his special teams in practice, pregame, and in the game. And so to have a mistake out there really irritates him. We've got uh, two sides tonight that emphasize heavily special teams. In fact, NC State has more block kicks than anybody the last five years. Virginia Tech is third in that category since 2000. Develli again, putting it away. Returnable for Blackman. And he's got a hole past the 30. And the kicker trips him up. Gidelli makes the play. Blackman is stopped at the 40-yard line. Well, we talked about what little brother did. Let's check in with big brother Michael Vick, who's standing by with Stacey Dale Schumann. Dave, I am joined by Michael Vick. And Mike, clearly your brother had an absence of two years. What was your biggest piece of advice for him coming into this season? Just to stay here strong, knowing that he still had two years left to play. And, um, you know, regardless of all the things that he's been through, he can't overcome it. A lot of people talk about the similarities between the two of you besides experience. What similarities do you see? There's plenty of similarities, but I think uh, Mark has an edge in throwing the football. And I will give him that. But, uh, you know, at the same time, there's a lot of similarities. I don't like to compare. But, uh, you know, two similar game plans. Real quick, what are your thoughts on next week's home opener versus McNabb and the Eagles? It's going to be a great game. I look forward to it. That's a great football team over there. I, I'm, uh, we have a great football team. So uh, that's what uh, Monday night is all about. All right, we appreciate it. Guys, he was reluctant to talk to us because he didn't want to take the spotlight off his brother. We appreciate his time. And you mentioned the fact that Vic will go up against McNabb. McNabb was coached by Kevin Rogers at Syracuse, and Rogers is now the quarterback's coach here at Virginia Tech. Tutoring young Marcus Vick. Virginia right. Tech, after a 27-yard game, gets to the 35 and out penalty flag down after the next play. I don't think he has to worry about the spotlight coming off of Marcus. Marcus can kind of generate his own spotlight. He's, he's, he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of talent, and he's got a lot of style with that talent. From what we've seen when he played several years ago, he's got the speed almost of Michael. And to say somebody's almost as fast as Michael Vick, is like saying something's almost as hot as the sun. You know, you're still doing pretty well. Rod, you mentioned his arm, that it is more accurate on medium passes. He also has a nicer touch. Michael Vick can throw medium passes, but with a cannon, that they'll go right through the chest of a receiver if they're not careful. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 71 on the offense, 15 yards, 
It's now second That's down. That's Derek Morris, the right tackle. Chuck Amato's team was 115th in the NCAA in penalties. Almost nine per game. They had more officials at practice this year to try to cut down on penalties. Now they get a second down and 23 back near midfield. Play action, and Davis hit as he gets rid of it, and it's picked off by Rouse. Rouse pushed out of play and then thrown down late. Penalty flag into the 42-yard line. Tack on more yardage to the interception. Daryl Tapp, first team all ACC put pressure on the quarterback. We've got some extracurriculars on the sideline between Jimmy Williams and TJ Williams of NC State, but that is quickly subsiding. Nice job by the coaching staff on Virginia Tech to get everybody separated and not let anything happen at the end. But this ball gets picked off because of that hit down low by Tapp. That ball sails as he was trying to get it out there to Sterling Hicks. And Tapp is waiting for Davis to get up so we can block him. There you go. <laughs> Tapp had eight and a half sacks a year ago. This guy rides his bike up the hills of Blacksburg while wearing ankle weights. And there is the uh, extra personal foul for the late hit on the sideline. Well, the reason that Tap, look at the left of your screen. There's nobody there. The reason is that they double teamed Chris Ellis on the other side, left Tap with single, and Tap beat his man and came across. That had to be a mistake. Well, the, if you're going to double anybody, you double Tap. Number 80 on the defense. 15 yards. First down. Well, so you've got to find Daryl Tapp because he'll line up anywhere along the line. And if they set up a double anticipating he'd be to the right, okay, come they on. missed it. Come on, come on. If you have to double a guy, you have you got to find Tapp. He's the man. He is the man. But see, that's one of the things that Virginia Tech likes about their defensive line this year is they've got good pass rushers in Burchett, Ellis, and Tapp. And also Jonathan Lewis, who they're going to double team a lot tonight, who might be the best defensive tackle in all of college football. First down to the 42-yard line of NC State. Vic out of the shotgun. Play fake. And Vic going down the sideline. And a terrific attempt by Royal, but he could not pull it in. A.J. Jones had coverage, kind of, because Royal was passing by about five or six yards. Well, we talked about Marcus Vic's accuracy and... I thought his media, intermediate passes were much better, and, and Michael apparently agrees. He said, hey, throws the ball better than I do. I'll give him that. I'm not sure that Marcus throws a better deep ball than Michael. I mean, Michael flicks that thing out there with effortlessly. It's just wonderful, beautiful to see. Second down, and Vic in the gun again. Two and a half to play, and the play clock down to six. They get it away. Toss to Royal in the flat. Nowhere to go. Stephen Tullock tracks him down. Pollock missed the spring and a shoulder injury. Was plagued by that most of last year. Still had a fine sophomore season a year ago. Saturday, September 10th, ESPN has two more great college football games in prime time. First, Georgia takes on South Carolina at 5.30 Eastern, followed by Arizona State and LSU. It's presented by Polaroid on ESPN Saturday at 5.30 and 8.45 Eastern time. Six defensive backs in the game for Virginia Tech on third, or for NC State, rather, on third and 13. And Vic to the air. And should have been a pick. Garland Heath dropped it as Vic overthrew on the medium range route, trying to hit Josh Hyman. I think that was a misread. Well, it's hard to read, though, when you've got, you've got a twist coming over here on this side. And they do it on that side because right tackle Dwayne Brown again has only been a right tackle for two weeks. And so with that twist, he wasn't quite in position to pick it up. Pressure came. But Dwayne Brown is the area, the guy that they want to work on on that right side area because he is the youngster over there. And he's only, what, 280 pounds or so, we say only, not a 300-pounder like every other line we see these days. So Virginia Tech fails to do anything with the NC State turnover. Schmidt on a booted away to Blackman, who was third in the country in punt return average a year ago. He's going to let this one go. And it takes a terrific hop for Virginia Tech. Just dives at the three-yard line. A 59-yarder by Schmidt. And then he drops one inside the five. And Roland Miner is down there again to down it for Virginia Tech. Well, last year in Blacksburg, McClendon ran wild for NC State. 
And Brian Randall was sacked 10 times. Not a lot of running room for Virginia Tech or NC State. And Pace missed a field goal as time expired from 43 yards out. Chuck Amato, who at Florida State had been on the opposite side of wide right many times. Finally victorious with a missed field goal late in a key situation and a key game. So NC State backed up inside the five. Not much running room off the left side for Reggie Davis. Minimal gain of the play. Roland Miner in there from his corner position in run support along with Vince Hall. Well, Mark Trestman knows what this team is. It's a defensive and special teams team, and his job is to make sure the offense doesn't give up a turnover that can hurt the defense, and so they'll be very conservative coming out. They're not afraid of punting it and trying to let their defense hold. Well, remember, his quarterback just got hit on the last series and threw an interception, so he doesn't want something negative down in this territory, and this fast defense can make something happen like that. Davis to the air on second down, and he's going to take off. And then he throws at the last second, and he was behind the line and got it to Williams for an NC State first down to the 20-yard line before Rouse makes the stop. Well, when a quarterback can move, he can create some problems for you. And Jay Davis is not known for his mobility, but he does. He'll come on out here, and that will allow, allow his guys to get clear inside. Right there in the middle, you'll see him. And as he works his way back across, he finds him there. They go two tight ends on first down, and bouncing off tacklers is Reggie Davis. And Davis shoves Rouse aside, and finally down to the 45. Reggie Davis, 235 pounds. He's a backup tailback. He's out of Tallahassee, Florida, delivering blows. And Chuck Amato believes in recruiting in the state of Florida. He coached at Florida State. He's got more than 30 guys from the state of Florida on the North Carolina State team. And Reggie's from Tallahassee, 24-yard gain. And NC State out of trouble. And the ball now at the 45. They're going to let uh, time run out here in the first quarter. We thought we'd have defense. We actually had a good bit of offense in the first quarter between two of the top defensive teams in college football in 2004. Pretty good debut as a starting quarterback for Marcus Vick. We are tied at seven after one in Raleigh. Game tied at seven as we get ready to start the second quarter. Dave Pash, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, Stacey Dale, Schumann, NC State. Nine first downs in the first quarter, averaging over seven yards per play. And Jay Davis, the NC State quarterback, was not pressured a lot, guys, in that first quarter. Well, State's done a good job of spreading out the Virginia Tech defense, and they're handling inside blitzes because they can identify them, Trevor. I think Bud Foster's got to make adjustments. Only time that Davis was really pressured, that was by Daryl Tapp, and Davis threw an interception. Penalty flag down as Williams makes the grab inside the 50 and out of play at the 48-yard line. But again, a penalty flag in on the play at the line of scrimmage on the far side. But for Bud Foster, Virginia Tech's defensive coordinator, it is difficult to make adjustments right now because he's got to stay in base formation because he's not sure what to expect from the personnel groupings, the motions, the shifts that Mark Tressman will have his NC State personnel do. He could go back to 2003 and see what Tressman did with the Raiders. He can go before that and see what he did with other NFL teams. But now he's not sure. So his adjustments are limited until he has an idea what he will see. Yeah, I stopped counting formations after I got to 10. They, they had run 10 different formations, 10 different combinations, and that slows down reaction for a defense when you have to think about what your assignment or your adjustment should be. Tony Baker, outstanding true freshman who had 161 touchdowns in high school, is the tailback, and he gets his first collegiate carry. And he's down at the 43-yard line, a gain of three on the play. Hall on the tackle. When you spread out a defense like Virginia Tech,
that eight-man front is not as effective because there's not really a second line of linebackers right up there ready to do something to you. You can identify where everybody is, and if you get a hat on a hat and make a block, and you've got backs that can break tackles, you can get seven yards of carry like they've been doing. Yeah, it's hard enough to block the personnel like Virginia Tech and Daryl Tapp. It's harder if you're not sure where they're coming from, and right now they're coming from one place. Look at this. Now you, now you start talking your adjustments. What's my coverage? What's my blocking assignment? Davis on second and 12. He's got Hall down the near sideline. And he lays the leather on Roland Miner and picks up the first down the 46-yard line. Now they're not going to give him a generous spot, so it's going to be close whether or not Tremaine Hall got the first down. All you need is a step if you're a receiver. And when a, when a team comes out, and they shift and they motion. The secondary communicating with the linebacker will change from one coverage to another. If you're not all on the same page, that offense can get that step on you. They're booing the spot. There are no coaches' challenges in this game, and they're not going to be close whether he got the first down or not. Vince Hall came up with the hit along with Chris Ellis on the back, and they're marking him short of the first down. Decision time for Chuck Amato, and he says, punt it away. That is the right decision. That is the right decision. When you've got the number one returning defense in the NCAA, pin him back deep. Boy, the way they've been moving the ball, I thought maybe they could pick that up there. Stead Duraney, who handles all the kicking duties for NC State, will punt it away. I agree with you. I kick it. Josh Morgan back to receive. at the five NC State trying to save it can't Marcus Hudson trying to keep it from entering the end zone could not well, before the game Julius Hodge now a member of the Denver Nuggets former NC State basketball standout had his jersey retired before tonight's football game he was honored here at Carter Finley Stadium had a great college career with the Wolfpack Philip Rivers had his jersey retired last year, or make the two years ago before his final game as a player. I should say the jersey was honored before the game, not retired. Julius Hodge, that is. Here's Vic on first down. In trouble. And Vic set for the first time. Manny Lawson all over it for NC State. Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese. All right, Dave, West Virginia and Syracuse this afternoon. The studio update brought to you by Taco Bell, and it was Ernest Hunter who was making a run for the quarterback, and he found him, sacking Harry Patterson in the end zone. Safety there, West Virginia shut down Syracuse, 15-7 the final. All right, Reese, West Virginia will host Virginia Tech later this season. Could be a stumbling block for the Hokies on route to a potential ACC championship, a national championship for that matter. But right now, NC State, pretty good stumbling block for the Hokies as Vic is in trouble again. And he can't spin away from one defender, Tullock, there to clean up. Now, guys, we have talked so much over the last uh, week or so about the tragedies in the Southeast, and many schools are doing all they can to help out in relief. And with more on that and what NC State is contributing, here's Stacey Dale Schumann. Dave, while the entire country is uniting amidst the great travesty that's happened with Hurricane Katrina, there's certainly no exception to that here at NC State. All of the varsity sports have joined forces to raise money for those victims of Hurricane Katrina. They're standing, or we're standing, at all of the gates throughout the stadium, accepting donations on behalf of the Red Cross, and of course, all the proceeds go to the effort. Guys. Vic with a jump pass here on third down. And it's incomplete at the 25-yard line to Morgan. Given five yards short anyway, so they got to put it away. Jimmy Sutton on the coverage for NC State. Now to donate for the Hurricane Relief Fund, call 1-800-HELP-NOW or go to www.redcross.org. 
they were seeing those images. I, I'm grateful for every clear glass of water that I've had since then, because so many people there don't even have that now. Nick Schmidt to boot it away for Virginia Tech. Blackman with a returnable kick at the 45. Straight ahead past midfield and down to the 47 yard line. So NC State will have good field position in Virginia Tech territory. But look at the field position football. Instead of going for it on fourth and one, NC State punts it on the exchange of punts. They're right back where they started. We're tied early second quarter in Raleigh. Tied at seven, early second quarter. NC State quickly up to the line. Ball at the 48-yard line of Virginia Tech. And now we have a whistle. We were saying that before the break, a couple of years ago, but prior to his final game, Phillip Rivers had his number retired. And that's what Jay Davis, the NC State quarterback, was up against last year. He was number two in the ACC in passing. But had more picks than touchdowns, decent numbers tonight, with the exception of that interception called by, caused by some pressure from Virginia Tech. And Davis looking to go deep. And the pass is broken up, incomplete. Laos had the interception earlier in the game, almost picked it off, but a penalty flag is down anyway. That's a new point of emphasis by officials protecting defenseless receivers. In the offseason, much discussion about protecting quarterbacks that they feel they do pretty well and punt returners. But receivers, when they're defenseless, have not received protection in the past. Jimmy Williams with the hit to the back now the of problem, Brian Clark. The problem I have with that is that ball is tipped. I mean, Williams has got to be coming up thinking he's got to make a play. Yeah, but you know what I think, Rob, though? You're right about that. But the ball was on the ground. There was no chance that it could be caught. Yeah, I forgot. We're playing flag football. <laughs> on a tip pass, you can have pass yeah. interference. Yeah, guys can get hit. He's not calling pass interference. He's calling personal foul. But, but the question is, was the ball already on the ground when the hit occurred? No, the official was saying the guy was defenseless. That's where he's going with it. Yes. From the 33-yard line, here's Davis to the air again. And he's got Hall, who's finally wrapped up and brought down to the 24-yard line. The DB with the tackle, James Anderson missed a tackle that gave Hall a couple of more yards. Dave, you were talking about Jay Davis before, and you don't want to be the guy to follow the guy. And he's followed the guy in Rivers, and no matter what he did, it wasn't going to be good enough. But he did have an up and down year. He had four touchdown passes against Miami, and then he had five picks against Clemson. And that guy, you think he never threw a pick. Philip Rivers, he was godlike. Number two all time in the NCAA in passing. And this running play on second down going to be a little bit short. Blackman shy of the marker, tackled by Tim Sandage. I think Jay Davis was unfairly maligned towards the end of last year. Three of his offensive linemen went down to injury. The guys replacing them had no game experience at all. And Davis started then to force things a little bit, to make decisions a little too fast. Now those guys from last year have experience, and they've been performing quite well against this Virginia Tech defensive front. See the rush pass difference for each team. NC State doubling up. Virginia Tech in yards, but we are tied at seven and a key third down and one coming up. Wolfpack three out of four. And they're going to have to call time. The play clock was at four seconds there. So Davis will burn a timeout. You know, Trevor, your, your point. A bunch of sacks we'll talk about when we come back. ESPN 2's College Football Prime Time. Brought to you by the all-new Hyundai Sonata. A Hyundai like you've never seen before. Well, you learn something every day, and apparently I did not know that the Colonel is an NC State fan. Looks like the Colonel. In a picture. Almost identical. Surrounded by red. <laughs> He's got to be happy so far with the way NC State has looked offensively with Mark Trestman in his first game as Wolfpack offensive coordinator, but a third down and short from the 24-yard line of Virginia Tech. Play action, Davis on the rollout. He's got Hall, first down and more. Hall fumbled the ball, but out of bounds. 
so NC State will keep possession of the 12-yard line. Brandon Flowers made the hit on Hall on the sideline. Well, you're moving the quarterback, getting your back out in a matchup on a linebacker. You get Tremaine Hall out there versus linebackers. That is a mismatch. All the way across, and number 42, James Anderson, is that poor guy in the white jersey chasing him. Jay, Jay Davis is doing a nice job of picking up the recognition points of this offense. NC State converted a third and five, third and seven, third and 17. Lastly, a third down and one. And now a first down of the 12-yard line. They run it to Davis inside and down to the nine for about three yards. Trevor, you made a point earlier about Jay Davis having trouble last season because he was getting sacked the offensive line. Well, you're absolutely right. In those first seven games, he was sacked only 11 times. In the last four games, he was sacked 17 times when all the injuries occurred. And today, he's thrown it 13 times, no sacks yet. And they've done a really good job. And Daryl Tapp, Chris Ellis, Nolan Burchett, three of the best pass rushers in the ACC. So look at the numbers for Davis over those final four games last year. Twice as many picks as touchdowns when his offensive linemen were banged up. Flags down. Here on second down at eight. Yeah, I think Dwayne Herndon, the right guard, moved a little bit early. Prior to the snap, full start. Number 62 on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Guys, this is relatively a youthful offensive line for Chuck Amato, the lone senior is Dwayne Herndon, who was a tailback in high school and started out as a defensive tackle for Chuck Amato, who's already seen his team penalized five times in this game. But not a lot of experience uh, up front. They're holding their own today. Approaching the nine-minute mark in the second quarter at second and 13, Davis with a pass play, a screen through the hands of Blackman, incomplete. Incomplete pass. That will bring up third down and long. On Monday night, Dr. Pepper College football kickoff weekend, and ABC wraps up with the game of the year, perhaps, in the ACC. This is a pretty good one here, too. Number nine, Miami, taking on 14th rank Florida State. Monday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Who wins it, guys? Well, the great thing is you get to have a direct comparison of Virginia Tech to those two schools as you start thinking about the ACC race. Personally, I think I like Miami. Trev? You know what, I, I think Virginia Tech, if they could get by this game, has a sh best shot. Third down and 13, and Davis, again with time, going end zone, but well over the head of Blackman, who had the linebacker beat Vince Hall. Rod Trev talked about getting favorable matchups with the back against the linebacker. They had it there with Blackman with the pass overthrown. Yeah, and that's Tressman making it work, Trevor. And look at what doesn't occur here. A sack up here. Right tackle, Derek Morris. Keeps him clean. Jonathan Lewis with a hit to the lower leg of Davis there on third down. Davis uh, a little slow to the sideline. Now a 33-yard field goal attempt by John Durant. who missed nine field goals last year, but he hits this one. And NC State takes a 10-7 lead. So Davis leads the Wolfpack to a field goal. And they lead the Hokies by three. Marcus Vick back on the field when we return. Back in Raleigh, North Carolina State leads 10-7. Their defense has done a great job of keeping Marcus Vick bottled up inside. That was the game plan. Don't let him get to the edge. And so far, Trevor, it's worked like a charm. The way they do that is to blitz or rush all the gaps and stay in the gap so there's no crease for him to squirt through. He runs a 4-2-8-40, which is blazing fast, but he may as well be the Statue of Liberty if he can't break into the open field. Remember last year's game, NC State had 10 sacks on Brian Randall, who was the ACC Player of the Year. NC State at the bottom of the ACC last year in time of possession, but winning that battle so far in this game. Mike Emo on the return. Emo makes a couple of moves. Finally turfed at the 22. Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. 
All right, Dave, this afternoon, Louisville and Kentucky, and I mean the Wildcats, played their guts out on a comeback attempt against Louisville. This is Andre Woodson going for the goal line and just a foot or so short, he gave up the football. Excellent call by the officials. The ball comes loose. Louisville recovered. The Cardinals hang on to win by seven. That would have been a great time for Jared Lorenzen to come back and play quarterback at 300 pounds The here. big fella. He's now the number three quarterback for the New York Giants, by the way. First down for Virginia Tech at the 22-yard line. It's Emo on the carry, slicing through the middle and to the 24-yard line. Tullock and Williams teaming up on the tackle, a two-yard game. When Michael Vick quarterback at Virginia Tech, the coaching staff went to Nebraska to learn the speed option so that they would enhance using Michael Vick, getting him to the edge. Well, this coaching staff went to Florida to talk to Urban Meyer about the spread option to help Marcus Vick to get him to the edge. We haven't seen that yet, but sooner or later, they got to find a way to get him outside. Second down. Emo again. He can't get to the perimeter either, and he's going to lose yardage. Manny Lawson held up the left tackle, Jimmy Martin, there, and Emo could not get around him. Well, part of the reason is they're getting penetration at the edges. They're going to get penetration up this direction, this direction, and so there's nowhere to run. Then when the interior guys fill those gaps, the ball carrier can't bounce outside. Virginia Tech struggling to run the football, 27 yards. They only hit 36 yards rushing last year against NC State. Third and eight, and Vic goes to the shotgun. He's just one out of his last four passing. Four receivers in the game. Four-man rush. Vic in trouble, got it away, but incomplete to Eno. McCargo put pressure on Vic. And it's an incompletion. Virginia Tech will punt. Well, when you get pressure that fast, that disrupts the timing of the screen. You got no chance. And here you see Mario Williams, one of those likely first-round picks, getting in the backfield in a hurry. Well, Mario Williams stunted inside. The whole right side of the offensive line followed him, and McCargo, no one there left to block him. Nick Schmidt has had a good night punting so far, a 59-yarder. Then he pinned NC State back. Inside of its five, and this is another great kick. Blackman inside his 20-yard line. Cuts it back to the middle of the field. Eludes one hokey, but not another. Taken down to the 24-yard line. Midway through the second quarter. NC State with a three-point lead will get it back on offense. Now, many people think Virginia Tech could win the national championship. The eighth-ranked Hokies trail NC State. Midway through the second, Dave Pash, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, Stacey Dale Schumann, and they trail because they can't stop NC State's offense right now. 188 yards for the Wolfpack. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech can't get it going with its offense, only 68 yards. It's a matter of matchups. North Carolina State has been able to get their running backs on the linebackers at will in the passing game, short passes. Tony Baker with his second carry, the true freshman going nowhere, leveled by Vince Hall. He was able to break free from Hall, but pursuit was there in time to bring down the back for only a gain of one. Well, TCU knocked off Oklahoma yesterday. Will Virginia Tech, the eighth-ranked team, go down today? Miami plays tomorrow night on ABC, and Louisville on ESPN earlier today beat Kentucky by a touchdown. And if Virginia Tech can win tonight, the schedule favors them. They have Georgia Tech, Boston College, Miami at home. They don't play Florida State. Virginia Tech is in the Coastal Division, along with Miami, North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia Tech, and Duke. The Atlantic Division, B.C., Florida State, Clemson, Wake, Maryland, and NC State. And down goes Davis, Jimmy Williams, coming on the blitz. Well, we talked about Jimmy Williams before. He plays that cornerback spot always to the short side of the field. It makes it easy to bring him on a blitz. You see him on the short side of the field up top there. Here he comes. And he's got great speed. Big guy, about 6'3", 215. And he's a guy that a lot of people expected to go to the NFL last season. He decided not to, wanted to stick around for a shot at the Thorpe and to mature as a person. An NFL scout told me this week, looking at Jimmy Williams, he's beautiful. 6'3", 215, runs a 4'3", 740. Davis in trouble again, it's a screen. 
And Blackman gets away from the DB, and then Hall finds him at the 19-yard line. Only a gain of four, and North Carolina State will punt the football. I hope the scout told you that you were good looking. <laughs> well, I didn't ask. <laughs> he did seem to like Trevor, though. <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of the beholder in that case. <laughs> So fourth down and long, and the Wolfpack will punt it away, and perhaps the final opportunity for Marcus Vick and the Hokie offense here in the first half. And this is dangerous territory. Virginia Tech with 104 block kicks in the Frank Beamer era over the last 19 years, and, and they're going to send eight, so they set up for the return. And Eddie Royal will have a chance. Instead, he calls for the fair catch at the 42-yard line. Had a little room in front of him, but elects for the fair catch, and Virginia Tech will have decent field position here at its 42-yard line. I wonder what the North Carolina State defense thinks about their offense right now. You know, during the, the spring and offseason, the defense was talking a little bit, had their chest out about how good they were, and not being very complimentary to the offense. And Chuck Amato said, hey, you guys can't talk anymore. I think he was worried about his team becoming divided. And they're doing, they're talking with their play right now. You saw negative yardage for Virginia Tech in its last four possession. From the Hokie 42, Vic to pass. And he throws a dart. Justin Harper with the catch and a Hokie first down inside the 35-yard line. Hudson on the coverage for NC State. This is that medium depth touch that we talked about that Marcus Vick has better than his brother Michael at this stage. Yeah, I don't think Michael Vick, as a first-year starter, would have dropped that ball in there like that. And Michael, by his own admission earlier in the game, he said Marcus is a better passer than I am. Can't say much now with a mouthful of hot dog. 26-yard <laughs> pickup. That was a dart with a few extra feathers on it. That was a beautiful throw. Humes on first down, runs right into the North Carolina State defensive line for minimal gain. Manny Lawson there first. Lawson has bulked up, picked up about 20 pounds in the offseason up to 245. Trevor, we talked at the beginning of the game about Marcus Vick being patient, not forcing things. He had a year of layoff. There's this tendency to want to make things happen. He hasn't done that tonight. No, he hasn't. And the key is the big mistake. So far, even though he hasn't made a huge play, he has not made a big mistake, and they're in this game. Inside the 30-yard line, second down. And Vic changing the play. Vic did see action at quarterback two years ago before being suspended last year. Maybe checked into the wrong play. A running play, Hume's going nowhere. McCargo again, along with Tuller. Last six games since 1986 have all been decided by fewer than three points. That's what we have right now, three-point game. That's why special teams is such a huge deal. Last year, it came down to that 43-yard that field goal that Virginia Tech had a chance to win the game with, and, and they missed it. Play clock at 10. Hokie's still in the huddle. Third down and 10 at a 32-yard line. It looked like Vic wanted to call a timeout in the huddle, and now he does. He saw the play clock and realized that he wasn't going to get, get the playoff. They still have two left, so they can afford to blow that one there. What will Marcus Vick do on third down and long? You'll find out in a minute. Back in Raleigh, third down and long, coming up for Virginia Tech, trailing NC State by three. A quick injury update with Stacy. Yeah, David, number 99, no tackle. Carlton, powerful Texas Tech. He's got an ankle sprain. They're getting x-rays. He would be treated in the locker room, but he's questionable for the rest of the game. All right. So third down and long. And Vic has time. Goes to his tight end. King is going to be about seven yards short of the first down sandwich at the 27-yard line. So do they go forward here on fourth down or settle for a field goal? They're going to kick. Well, that was the Vic fake. Did you see him stand there? Didn't move his feet at all. Flip the ball out. And I like that decision by Marcus Vick. Didn't have a play for the first down. He did throw it short to not commit the mistake, right? See, I think that year he had with his brother Michael in Atlanta, being a professional, going to practice with them, watching film with them, helped him manage games better because he didn't try to force that last play. 44-yard attempt by Pace. Last year missed the 43-yarder at the end of the game, but nails this one to tie it at 10. 2.33 to play, brand new ball game in Raleigh. 
Check with Reese Davis is going to tell us what he's got for us at the half. Reese? Plenty of good stuff, Dave. Mark May alongside. We got a classic in the bluegrass on this. And I think Miami and Florida State, which we'll look ahead to, they've got a lot to live up to based on our game tonight. And we'll see if Rice is cooked. Well, at halftime, if you stick around and watch, I'm going to tell you who's going to win the Miami-Florida State game and why. Is that sort of like you tried to tell us who's going to win the Pittsburgh-Notre Dame game? Or is that different? Back to you guys. Have a good half. I may not live to see half. Nice knowing you. Mark, you can reach over and smack. It's allowed. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't think Nate is going to forget hearing about that one the rest of the season. Now Chuck Amato, when he played at North Carolina State, was the captain of the famed white shoe defense. He's now a red shoe head coach, along with the white sunglasses. And it's kind of funny to see that he's a decently built guy in the upper body. Not that I'm looking, but <laughs> the players, the players in the media guy, when they're asked about him, they see he looks like a superhero. He's got the big chest and the skinny legs. The first thing the players noticed on their recruiting trips is the chest. Yeah, they, you know, they, they saw it on TV and then they met him in person. Yep. His legs are plenty big enough, though, to kick you in the derriere if he needs to <laughs> practice, and he's done that. Day or night, the white sunglasses are on. And is that the voice is gone. Thing? The voice is clearly going to choke him out when talking to him this week. I think he lost that voice about 20 years ago, and it's never recovered. for the first time in his tenure at NC State did not go to a bowl game last year. Many people wondered, was it Phil Rivers? Or was it Chuck Amato the reason for the success of a four-year period? As the kick sails into the end zone, and NC State will take over at the 20. I mean, they have, because of NC State's success, put a lot of money in the program into Carter Finley Stadium, about $40 million into a new press box, Vaughn Tower, luxury suites, club seats. You got the Murphy Center there that you see. 51 luxury boxes, and they're all leased for the entire season. You know, the expectations rise when you pour that kind of money into your football program, and Chuck Amato realizes it, and he needs to get a winning team again. Get back to the postseason. His losing season last year is first in 25 years, going back to when he was a linebacker's coach at the University of Arizona. The NC State 20, they go in backfield. And the pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Orion Martin, Richard Freshman, back up defensive end for the president trying to stick the mitts up and bat it to turf. Well, he comes off from the bottom of your screen and just gets his hand up in the air as he gets chopped down by the offensive lineman. Talk about hand-eye coordination. That's, that's amazing. I heard Bob Greasy today on that West Virginia Syracuse game talking about how when he was a quarterback, he just hated it when linemen put their hands up. They were trying to look through picket fences, and you saw exactly an example of that. Second down and 10 of the 20. And a huge hole for Blackman off the gut. Blackman into the secondary and tackled at the 39 after a 19-yard game. Right up front in the center, cross block, nice job. You can't make it any bigger than that. Look at that. You just cruise right through that, and you're one-on-one -on -one with the safety at that point. It's a nice job with the offensive line. You see the missed tackle by Aaron Rouse on the play. Again, they go straight ahead with Blackman. He's up to the 42-yard line. C. Day does have a timeout left. As we hit the two-minute mark here in the second quarter, Orrin Martin on the tackle of Blackman on that previous play. You know, Mark Tressman told us coming into the ball game, he did not know what he was going to get of the North Carolina State offense. He just didn't know. Guys were learning new assignments, new terminology, didn't know who could play when the heat was on. Well, I think he's found out. He's got some backs that can play. His quarterback is smart, and that line is opening some big holes. Blackman's got 52 yards on nine carries. Stuck down in seven. And NC State will have to use its final timeout half. And the pressure is picked up for Virginia Tech on senior quarterback Jay Davis. Well, they have pressured him all day. They've had trouble getting sacks. There's one right there. But they have gotten to it and forced him to get the ball out a little early. That's why it's so impressive to me, based on last year, to see the maturation of, of Jay Davis. Last year, when pressure like that 
came. He would force the ball into coverage and it would turn into multiple turnovers. Right now, he's doing a much better job of being accurate with his mind as well as arm. Well, it's been a good weekend in terms of upsets by ACC teams as we look at Dr. Pepper ACC update. Even though Wake Forest lost, Virginia struggled a bit. Maryland barely got by Navy at Clemson being Texas A&M. Georgia Tech over Auburn. And a big one tomorrow night, ABC at Eastern, Miami at Florida State. Yeah, Georgia Tech looked awfully good in that win over Auburn last night. Miami, Florida State, quarterback. You know, quarterback play this weekend has been real spotty. And it's clear, if you don't have a veteran quarterback who makes good decisions, you're going to struggle. I think Chris Leak likes that Urban Meyer offense in Florida. He looked terrific <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, he did, and you know, the, to keep him from getting hit by those SEC linebackers in that option, they had him throw the ball an awful lot. I thought that was an interesting tweak to the offense by Urban Meyer. So no timeouts remaining now for NC State. Second down and seven. Back to throw goes this to Hall. Hall trying to get to the outside boundary, and he did to stop the clock at the 47 yard line. James Anderson tracked down and all is slow to get up. Tressman, West Coast offense. How many times have you seen Jerry Rice do this, where he runs out four yards upfield, that's it, all the way across the field, catch the ball on the run, and gain the yards after the catch? That's because crossing routes work very well against man-to-man -man coverage. You can use the width of the field to run away from the defensive, defensive back and get yards after the catch. And North Carolina State has done that. They haven't thrown the ball deep down the field, but short crossing routes, mismatches. Fresh set it down inside Virginia Tech territory again, a 47 yard line. Davis looking for the screen pass and then North Carolina the fly. Edgy Davis. Virginia Tech not fooled on that one. But those short passes, Rod, with, with yards after the catch, have been instrumental, I think, in helping Jay Davis be more secure with the ball. When you try to get long passing plays by throwing it down the field, you expose yourself to greater risk of interception. Those short passes, far less risk of interception. But if you hit them on the run, they can still catch it and go. Jay Davis has thrown an interception. NC State last year near the bottom of the country with 32 giveaways. Davis had 15 picks last year. But other than that interception, he's looked pretty good. On second down, he's going to throw again, and again to the flop. Sterling Hicks, oh, he's eight inbound. And he goes down to the first seven-yard line. And he's short the first down, so that's... They're going to stop it for a minute here. It appears that maybe he got a minor on the tackle. They get a good thought, and it is a first down, so that'll stop the clock for the moment. Now, at that time, they went to a hot receiver. Virginia Tech came out of the man defense, brought pressure, and played zone behind it. Because they were afraid of the crossing runs. Clock starts again. This quick drop, and he's set. Tim Sendage, a back defensive tackle, finally gets David down on the ground. Yeah, I think Bud Foster is starting to get into a flow. He is switching up his coverages, and now you'll see something inside with great effort. Good blocking, but he's on the ground, and he still, Sendage, manages to get there while he's being blocked. Clock running under 40 seconds to go, second and 17. Another pass play. David at time, dumps it short. Blackman gets away from Anderson. Flag down. Thrown on the play on the side by Tap. It is Blackman. Tomorrow over there as well. And a penalty flag down. Yeah, catches the face mask. That's kind of borderline between a 5 and a 15 yarder. You know, to see the head turn. Yeah, but it was close. Yeah, it was close. Well, bad enough that you face us, but you don't make the tackle either. <laughs> Let's see whether it's 5 or 15. Be a bad film session there. <laughs> so they'll face pass on the defense, number 42. Oh, five yards. Five yards result in the first down. Yeah, Dave, what the... A really bad feeling is next day when you're watching film and the coach puts it up there and runs it back in slow motion. He says, all right, so you, you do two things badly here. You miss a tackle and you get the face mask pass penalty. Not good. Second down at six. Of course, you never did that. <laughs> they run up. And Davis is up at the line of scrimmage. We're going to hear some moves. That was an interesting 
Interesting ball with 29 seconds to go. I mean, they're, they're going to spike it, so they're not... Uh, the clock didn't start. Well, listen to the crowd. I mean, the, the crowd is going. The clock did not start at 28 seconds. It was supposed to start on the snap. It did not. Because more than three seconds went off by the time that the play took place and ended. But you know what? They call a running play, which should be a problem with clock, but the, this stoppage here negates call to run the ball. The clock is now stuck. But they were getting up there to spike it, so that was not just to route the clock at the end of the half. Put the game clock to 19 seconds. Yeah, six more seconds to come off the clock to 19 seconds. But now they've got to get up there. But now they don't have to spike it. They can run the play. Because the clock stopped right. by that adjustment. Yeah, but they're, they're down here. They're going to have to run the play for the first down. They have no more timeouts. Yeah, they're playing with fire a little bit and letting get a first down. Davis was signaling for the spike, but maybe didn't realize that it was going to be third down. But now, because of the stoppage, they can run a play. Empty backfield and Davis to the pump. Eight. Going deep middle. It's caught. Hicks inside the 10. Dropped by Williams. They'll stop the clock. And reset it when they get over the ball. He's got time to spike it and get the field goal team in. Or do you take a shot at the end zone? It might be your last shot. They're going to run one play, it looks like. Oh, they spike it. Why do you do that? You, you know why? You do it because your philosophy is you had a great defense. This is almost a gimme, and you didn't expect to be in this position anyway. You can go in and have time up, but the fans don't like it. They want a shot at the end zone. They want a shot at the end zone, but the fans want to win. The booing now, but if this style allows NC State to win this game, they'll be cheering at the end. They're going to run a play, guys. They're not going to kick the field goal. They've got eight seconds, so they can take a shot into the end zone. Uh, you better get rid of it quickly because a sack here will cost you three right. points. No timeouts. You can't stop the clock at this point, and they can't get a first down anymore to stop the clock. So a timeout called by Virginia Tech, which will allow Chuck Amato to think things over, maybe rethink the decision to go forward here. Yeah, I think you, you stay with what you are. You stay with your philosophy. And, Rod, you mentioned they want to win with defense and special teams. And right now, to put a, a chance to put another three points on the board, I think they should do. Well, if you take your shot at the end zone, you, you're getting greedy. You're getting greedy because you, you didn't expect to be down here. And unless your quarterback makes a great decision, you run the risk of getting nothing out of this. Last year's game was a one-point win for North Carolina State. Seems like every time Virginia Tech and NC State hook up, we've got a close game. We the last six games all decided by two and a half points in the double-digit victories. Only 13 and 45 games between these two schools. I think safest play to run down here, if you're going to run a play, Trevor, is to run a fade route. Something where the quarterback's going to throw it toward the corner so only his guy can get it, and if it's not caught, you still have time on block. I agree, Rod, with a three-step drop because in the first quarter, Davis was relatively clean in the pocket, but Foster's troops have gotten a lot of pressure on him in this second quarter, so I would think it would be a three-step drop. If anything short of the goal line, that's over. There's no way they get up there and spike it a dime and get the field goal get out there. Again, they're out of timeouts. They've got room to run a fade toward the bottom of the field here. They've got the best receiver, Hall, at the bottom of your screen. Davis, instead of going middle, it nearly intercepted. D.J. Parker, bring T.J. Williams, almost picked it off. Yeah. And now the field goal unit will come with four seconds remaining in the half. That looked really bad. That's just plain luck because Parker had both hands on that ball, and that should have been picked off. Plus, it was a five-step drop, so there was greater risk of a sack, which would have also ended the half. But it's worked out. Now they get their try. 27-yarder by Don Duraney. He's one for one today. 33-yarder earlier. And NC State will take a three-point lead into the locker room. Two field goals for John Duraney tonight. And the Wolfpack have a 15-10 halftime lead over Virginia Tech. We'll check in with Stacey Dale Schumann. Coach Amato, your time of possession was very impressive. Why were you so effective offensively? Execution. The whole thing was execution, but we got to stop the silly penalties. The penalties is going to have everything. The defensive penalty gave them the opposition, and offensive penalties put about it. Your defense, one of the best in the country. How do you grade it? 
Just fair. Just, just fair. fair. We're, we're Dairy Queen right now. We're soft. Thank you, Coach Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a line by Nakamoto. It was hard for him to get it out because he could barely talk. But a beautiful line nonetheless. NC State leads by three at halftime. A couple of beautiful voices. Mark May, Reese Davis. What? Welcome back to Raleigh. Sunday night football college style. NC State leading Virginia Tech as we get ready for the third quarter. 13 to 10. Dave Pash, Rod Gilmore, and Trevor Maddich. And I know, guys, it's early, but we're going to do a little grading. Marcus Vick, let's start with him. Your thoughts on his first half and your grade. Uh, I thought he played pretty well. I'll give him a B, and it's only a B because I think that he was hemmed in. State did a good job of keeping him from getting to the edge, but I like his patience. I like the fact that there were no negative plays. All right, how about the defensive line, which I'm sure contributed a little bit to that grade for Marcus? Well, we talked about the defensive ends earlier. Mario Williams, Manny Lawson, I give them an A plus for keeping Marcus Vick hemmed in, like you mentioned, Rod. Vick has three rushes for four yards and by taking him completely away from the running attack I give that defensive line specifically those two ends an A plus NC State the number one defense in the country in terms of yards allowed per game and only giving up 99 yards in the first half of tonight's game and that one point win last year against Virginia Tech they held the Hokies to 192 total yards for the game and on that pace again this year and NC State will start with the football here in the second half and that kick sails deep into the end zone, and Washington will down it. NC State will start at the 20. But first, our game track. Well, Marcus Vick made his debut as a starting quarterback, threw the ball well, did not get outside to create any big plays, but no negative plays. Showed you a very accurate arm in the first half. And the no negative plays, Rod, I think is, is absolutely huge. As you look over at NC State, the same guys last year, that really couldn't get out of their own way, let alone into somebody else's, now are protecting the football pretty well and moving the football pretty well by spreading the field. Two field goals by John Duraney in that first half and a touchdown by Blackman. A field goal for Virginia Tech and a rushing touchdown for Mike Emo. Running play, Blackman on first down. And he is dragged down by James Anderson and a penalty flag down. There is a new rule in the NFL about when you grab a player by the collar and you drag him down. That rule does not exist in college. And still a vicious play, and they're going to call a face mask. You see with the left hand, he got the face mask and then yanked him back with the right hand, which should have been a, I don't know how that's not a penalty in college. They've got it instituted in the NFL. Well, it's not a face mask penalty. I mean, if they want to call unnecessary roughness. On the off defense. They Five yards, that. first down. You know what he might have thought because Blackman's head snapped back. He might have thought, let's see if there's a, yeah, th there's a face well, mask right there. Left yep. hand. The, the left, left hand, hand grabs it, lets yeah. it go. That is what I thought the officials saw and mistakenly thought it was face mask. But right here, right now, then he lets go. That is a good call by the official. Yep. That looks like it hurts. Wow. Hopefully that's something they'll look at next year about putting that horse collar rule into college football. Davis on the roll up. Man, wide open. And dancing along the sideline is Williams. He led the team in catches last year with 31. Well, they're going right back to stretching the field. That last play, a dive up the middle that ended up breaking outside. This one designed to go to the sideline. Well, Mark Tressman is working the linebackers. He's using his backs to flow the linebackers one way, slip the tight end behind him. In the first half, he also used his backs to get matchups with linebackers, and it worked in the first half. He's using the field with his running backs and tight ends. Tressman in his first year at NC State after stints on eight different NFL coaching staffs. He was offered a position with the Saints in the offseason as the offensive coordinator but said that in college he could spend a little bit more time with his family, less pressure day to day than in the NFL, and so he chose to go to NC State. Reggie Davis picking a hole and finding a first down at the 32, gain of three on the play. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by State Farm. All North Carolina State, including time of possession. NC State finished last in T.O.P. last year in the ACC. Well, the surprise is that State has been able to run the ball, and they really haven't had turnovers, just the one interception. Yeah, and this is why I like that decision to, to kick the field goal uh, at the end of the half that Mark May didn't like, because this is a tight, tight game where 
Virginia Tech's offense is being stifled by State's defense. Now the short passing game has been beautiful for NC State. They've got over 140 yards after the catch. And they go five wideouts here on first down. And they toss the short pass and it's caught at a flag down. Well, let's uh, check in with Stacy Dale Schumann. Find out what Frank Beamer had to say to his team at halftime. Dave, Frank Beamer's message was three part. One, we've got to have much better coverage. Two, we've got to make solid tackles. And three, we have to stop third down to simply give ourselves a chance offensively. Dave? All right, Stacy, you look at NC State, especially in the first quarter, they were converting third down and five, third down and seven and third down and short. Well, the reason those guys are wide open is that it goes back to the matchups Tressman has been able to get. He's been able to get his backs on linebackers. They go empty here again on first down and 15. Davis gets rid of it into the near flat. Anthony Hill back on tight end rumbles to the 35. Tackled by Rouse and Hall. An eight-yard gain of the play. Frank Beamer in his 19th season has been to 12 straight bowls, turned a program around that was nothing in the late 80s and into an ACC championship and three-time Big East champion and perhaps a national champion down the road, if not this year. And they were in the national title game in Michael Vick's redshirt freshman year in 1999. Michael now with the Atlanta Falcons and here tonight watching his younger brother Marcus make his debut as a starting quarterback. But it's the quarterback on the other team, Davis, who's getting hot. And nice move by Davis along the sideline, getting away from one man, and then great effort to take into Virginia Tech territory down to the 44. Two missed tackles there for Virginia Tech. And the matchup, again, against Vince Hall. And there you see Bud Foster, who's having to deal with this going on. He's been a defensive coordinator at Virginia Tech for 19 seasons. Very loyal staff at Virginia Tech. Well, you look at all of his staff. They've been there, most of them, for, for a long, long time because Frank Beamer takes care of them, and that's part of the continuity of going to 12 consecutive bowl games. First down at the 47-yard line. And they run that gut ghost and hand it off to Davis, and he gets minimal game. You know, guys, uh, Beamer uh, has been working on trying to get a new contract, and the situation now is he's got a five-year rollover every year, so even if he doesn't get a new contract by December, it'll roll over and have another five years. He's going to get a new contract. He's got a $2 million a year offer on the table, and he wants his assistants to get a salary increase. He wants his program for guys like Bud Foster, who've been around here a while, to be paid like a top-10 program. And they used to be, but they've been outdistanced by the other programs. The Beamers had a chance to go perhaps to Alabama, North Carolina was in the mix for those jobs. And we asked Bud Foster this week, and he said Beamer consults his assistants because he's going to take them with him if he goes somewhere else. But he's at Virginia Tech to stay more than likely. Ooh. Davis gets thrilled by Vince Hall right in the mouth at the 45-yard line. Well, don't question Davis's courage. I would have slid if I saw Vince Hall coming at me. That guy is known from this linebacking core as being the hardest hitter. And oh, man. You see his head snap back. Look at his head. Snap. And he didn't lead with the helmet. He led with the shoulder. He made the contact in his sternum, not in his face mask. Therefore, it was a completely legal head snapping hit. You're going to tackle. Keep your eyes up. Eyes open. Head up. NC State, we talk about third down conversions, converted to third and 17 in the first half. Here's third and eight. Davis rolling out and being chased flag down and Davis completes it to Williams and then he's twirled out of play by a DB on the far side of the 40 yard line again a penalty flag down you know what's crazy is that we thought at the beginning that Michael Vick would be the quarterback scrambling and throwing it Jay Davis Marcus Vick I'm sorry Marcus would be the scrambling and throwing quarterback and Jay Davis has been the scrambling and throwing quarterback well they have put him on the move they've moved the launching point gotten the quarterback outside Virginia Tech has not done that they've had Marcus Vick drop back they haven't used rollouts they haven't used uh, any of the option game for him yet I would like to see Michael Vick against this NC State defense that would be pretty interesting <laughs> right now we're Haley, seeing... number 71 on the offense 10 yards from the previous spot. Vick is going to see a lot of those Go NC State down. defensive players in the NFL down the road if not next year well, what we're seeing is also a template of what NFL teams try to do to Michael Vick with the Falcons because they want to keep him in the pocket as well. And so 
you know, they're saying, look, Marcus has the same kind of running playmaking ability. Let's do the same thing they're doing to his brother in Atlanta. They look very much alike. I mean, physically, they are very similar. Size, height, weight. Listed at six feet tall, maybe a little bit shy of that. Right around 210, 215 pounds, both with sub 4-3 speed. One of the differences, Michael left-handed, Marcus right-handed. Back to throw Davis. It's a screen. Caught at the 45-yard line, Blackman. Into Virginia Tech territory and powers to the 42. Good yardage there on that third down play, but still going to be short of the marker. And it'll bring up fourth down at about six or seven. Know who you are. You're the offense of North Carolina State. Your job is not to run up the score. It's to avoid mistakes and turnovers. Control the ball in the clock. The, that they didn't get a first down here is okay. They're still controlling the clock. They will still punt Virginia Tech into poor field position. That's the way Chuck Amato wants to win. They've had the ball nine minutes longer than Virginia Tech in this game. Josh Morgan goes back to receive the punt from John Duraney. We talked about in the first half, this game could come down to special teams play. Angle toward the sideline. And another terrific punt. We saw a great punt in the first half by Virginia Tech's Nick Schmidt. Here it's John Duraney of NC State hitting. Virginia Tech inside the five. Not a good starting position here in the third quarter for Virginia Tech quarterback Marcus Vick. Three-point lead for NC State early third in Raleigh. And we welcome you back. NC State with a three-point edge over Virginia Tech. Marcus Vick once again ready to take the field. A lot of people wondered, how would Marcus Vick handle his first career start in a hostile environment? And when asked if he had butterflies, he said, no, 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 no. Butterflies are for kids. When asked about the crowd, he said, no, 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 no. The crowd isn't playing the game. NC State is playing the game. We're not worried about the crowd. But guys, butterflies, are they really for kids? <laughs> butterflies. Butterflies, I can't imagine what this guy was going through in these several hours before this game when he just had to sit there and the accumulation of all spring and all summer. And now he's got his chance. And so far, he's not being allowed really to do much. Twice the total plays NC State has to his. Second down and eight. NC State showing blitz off the edge. Here it comes. It's picked up. Vic throws short. He's got Clowney pushed out of play at the eight-yard line, so they give him a little more breathing room. A.J. Davis on the tackle. Now Marcus Vick and Michael Vick, we talked about in stature, equal. Weight. Vick weighs, so Marcus weighs a little bit more, and then 40-yard dash time a little better for Michael, and then they throw with different hands. And then, uh, don't just glance over that 4-2-5, 4-2-8. That's pretty serious. Uh, it's amazing when the quarterback is the fastest guy in the field, and that was the case with Mike in college and the case with Marcus here tonight, even though NC State's got some guys with tremendous speed. Tech only two out of seven on third down. Vic rolling out, and it's dropped along the sideline by Harper. There is a penalty flag down to the defensive secondary in the middle of the field. And that was the first time the entire night Virginia Tech got Vic outside of the pocket, got him to the edge with a rollout. The way they were able to get him out was to put a double team on defensive end Mario Williams. That's a huge break for Tech. That's happened a handful of times. Take a look at the left of your State. screen. You'll see the running back come up far left. There you go, number nine. Now the running back's got him. And number nine, Mario Williams, is not upfield in penetration. He is on the line of scrimmage, which allows Vic to get out. We talked about North Carolina State being undisciplined. That penalty, a huge one. If they don't commit that penalty, they get the ball back in good field position, but they had this problem last season. They're having it again now. Virginia Tech has only seven first downs, and three of those have come because of NC State penalties. Now Vic can go to work from his 22. I have not seen a lot of eye formation. They got Emo and Humes in the game at the same time. The two tailbacks, and now Humes lined up as a wingback. Here comes Blitz and Vic lobbing near side. What a throw! And unable to come up with it was Josh Hyman incomplete. Marcus Hudson was right with him. 9.03 to play. Third quarter, NC State leading number eight Virginia Tech by three from Carter Finley Stadium. 
Alongside Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, and Stacey Dale Schumann, I'm Dave Pash. Virginia Tech has not had the ball a lot tonight. Only 13 minutes to over 22 for NC State. Chuck Amato's team has done a good job keeping Marcus Vick off the field. Vick making his first collegiate start tonight after being suspended athletically and academically all of last season for off the field legal issues. On second and ten, Emo running free to the outside 35. And Emo past the 40 to the 43, a gain of about 20 in a first down. Well, one of the reasons this opens up in the middle is all the attention NC State is paying to keep Vic inside. Note, there's nobody over here. Why? Because look at the left of your screen. Everybody's out there to try to keep Vic from rolling out. That creates the space. And you know who likes that play call? His brother. He says, look, if those guys are going to stay wide to keep my brother in the pocket, let's run through the spaces that they vacated. I think Virginia Tech is better off with Marcus Vic in the shotgun. I think they have more options with him back there, and he has more room to create. Digressing for a moment, did you guys see Mario Williams, the defensive end, running down the running back there on the sideline? We've got some unbelievable speed in this game. Bubble screen, Humes. Oh, he just gets leveled at the 50-yard line. Manny Lawson over there with a big hit for NC State. Manny Lawson's a scary guy. He's got a defensive end body at 6'6", 245, but he runs a 4'4", 340. There's not a lot of wide receivers that can do that. Size doesn't matter when you can run somebody down, except for when he arrives. Because with that kind of speed, when that mass gets there, he'll hit you and you'll stay hit. Hey, industrial engineering student. He's fast and he's smart. Second team all ACC a year ago at three sacks against Virginia Tech last year. Has one sack tonight to go along with four tackles. This drive started at the one. We're at the 50 right now, the second and three. Hume straight on, first down to the 43-yard line. Dragged down from behind by Tullock and Presley. You know, they'll keep doing this until State packs it inside. Once again, both defensive ends very wide to contain Marcus Vick. They came up the field, and Humes runs up the gap in the center. Well, Virginia Tech has not gotten Royal involved in any of the passing game yet or gotten the ball to him. He's their best wide receiver, and it's partly because they're trying to get back inside and create, as you mentioned, Trevor, but they got to get Royal involved in the game. From the 44 of NC State, first down. And the Wolfpack showing blitz up the middle. And Vic has to get rid of it, throwing off his back foot. And a fight for it, and an incompletion. On a play on the far sideline. Pass was intended for Morgan Davis, caught it. But he was out of bounds, so no interception. Who was Marcus throwing to there? Was he throwing to his receiver? Or was he throwing to his brother? Uh, right in front of Mike. Mike is not moving. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you to shift the way you move through the world. Virginia Tech had 99 total yards in the first half, 88 yards on their first possession of the second half. Results in a 28 yard field goal. And we're tied at 13. Marcus Vick with some amazing runs on that previous drive. And then Cavelli kicks it out of the end zone. Let's check in with Stacy for more on that last drive by the Hokies. Guys, that was a big time drive. The hope, the energy has been revitalized and restored on the Virginia Tech sideline. All the players jeering about that last drive. They've got a lot of motivation right now, and they've got a sense of urgency, guys. Oh, don't forget, things are a little bit different in the ACC this year. Last year and in previous years, the regular season champ got the automatic BCS bid, but now with Boston College coming in, you've got a two-division alignment, Coastal and Atlantic divisions. And because you've got 12 teams in two divisions, you have an ACC championship game in Jacksonville December 3rd. And the winner of that game gets the automatic bid to the BCS. NC State at its 20-yard line. Black and up right tackle. Motors forward to the 25, a DB with his sixth tackle of the night. One of the things that Mark Tressman is fully aware of is that the defense for North Carolina State is tired after that long drive. And he needs to get a first down or two, give them some rest. And running the ball is a good way to start it. Wayne Herndon hurts himself on this play in NC State. 
went one and three in its final four games because its forces were extremely depleted on the offensive line in 2004. Even the lone senior out of that NC State offensive line. And he's one of nine married guys on the North Carolina State team. You've got Marcus Hudson, the defensive back, who's married. James Newby on the offensive line had a baby. Oh, well, his wife had a baby, Lindsay. Emma, who was born in July. I'm glad you cleared that up. Thank you. Under two to go here in the third. Second and five. That's Hall in motion. Davis finds Hall. First down to the 31-yard line. A DB with another tackle, but moved the chains for the home team. Well, this has turned into a, a real old-fashioned struggle. Woody Hayes and Bo Schembechler would be happy about this. Both teams playing field position, both teams protecting the football, both teams angling for a close victory. Toss sweep Blackman. It's turned back inside beautifully by Anderson and the rest of the Hokie defenders. Oh, oh, oh. A little uh, extracurricular there, but no penalty flag. Ellis for the Hokies down there on Blackman, but no flag down. That was accidental. He was trying to get up, lost his balance, put a foot right in his gut. This gets turned back inside. The defense gets there. That's not unusual. But as Ellis, number 49, slammed him down. Now look as he gets up. Oh, oh. oh sorry. Oh. How do, you, how do you like the flavor of those cleats? I have a feeling he knew what he was doing. Second and ten. Seven step drop. Ellis is there. And Davis forced out. Tap is trying to get him, and Davis gets rid of it out of bounds. Incomplete. Jonathan Lewis also had pressure on Jay Davis. In, in this Bill Walsh offense, a lot of the routes are adjusted based on the coverage. And the crossing route comes up when the receivers find man-to-man -man coverage. They simply try to run across the field away from the defensive back. At that time, the defensive backs were sitting inside, and he couldn't find him. Davis could not find anyone who, who was running away from the, the defensive back. 30th pass of the day under Mark Trestman for Davis. It's a short and a block run, but he breaks a tackle. And another first down. Oh, and then he loses the ball at the 43 after a jarring hit. And Virginia Tech's got the football. And Blackman is down. He got pummeled and lost the ball. And the Hokies take over at NC State Territory. Rouse forced the fumble. Rouse is number 36. He's a four. Oh, Jimmy Williams. Nice. Jimmy also. Williams put a shoulder into him. I think Rouse hitting him from behind distracted his attention. And look, when he hits him now, all of a sudden he loses his capability to protect himself. Blackman sees Williams coming. When he gets hit from behind, he loses balance and so therefore was wide open to that shot. Barry Booker comes up with the fumble recovery. And Jimmy Williams, you see why many people think he's the best defensive back in all of college football. He can cover and he can hit. Hopefully Blackman's okay. Back in Raleigh where they're checking out Darrell Blackman who got drilled and lost the football. The second turnover today by NC State. Boy, and he's just wide open for that hit. He looked inside, but he was thrown off. Virginia Tech has not turned it over and Vic goes to work again. And his pass overthrown intended for David Clowney. A.J. Davis on the coverage. But Darrell Blackman has been a big threat for NC State. Picking up lots of room, lots of yardage inside. And with him out of the lineup, someone else will have to step in. We've seen other backs for them, but none as prominent as Blackman. Looks like could be ribs. He's got the lone touchdown tonight for NC State. Delayed blitz, and Vic somehow gets out of there. Finally tracked down to the 42-yard line by Stephen Tullock. Carlin Heath came on the blitz, was right there, but just could not bring down Vic. 
first half, Michael Vick could not get outside. They kept him pretty much hemmed in. In the second half, they opened things up a little bit, got him in the shotgun, gave him some room, got him to the edge on the rollout. He made a couple of big runs on the drive that got them a field goal for last possession. And well, Virginia Tech has been blitzing it. They've been wanting to fill all the rushing lanes and daring him to beat him with his arm, and thus far it's been working. What will Marcus Vick do in the fourth quarter? He's got a big third down and nine coming up. We are tied as we go to the fourth in ACC country, an opening weekend on ESPN2. Fourth quarter in Raleigh. Virginia Tech ranked eighth in the country, highest preseason ranking ever, tied with North Carolina State. Virginia Tech finally getting it going offensively in the third quarter and holding NC State in check. NC State still with a healthy lead in total yards as Vic gets rid of that one on third down and nine. Pressured by Jimmy Sutton, and it's fourth down as we check in with Stacy. Dave, the latest injury report for the NC State sideline. Daryl Blackman has a bruise to his back. He will be fine to play. An offensive lineman, Dwayne Herndon, has suffered a shoulder stinger. He's listed as probable, guys. Okay, Stacy, appreciate that report. And Virginia Tech will have to punt it away. So we'll see who is in the backfield for NC State. Blackman is out there, and he is going to return the punt. Third leading punt returner in the country a year ago. You'd think he'd be lined up at tailback when the Wolfpack takes over. Been a great night for Schmidt punting the football. Already pinned NC State back at the five earlier. And Blackman backing up. He takes it at the half yard line. That's where he caught it. And so that is where NC State will take over. What was Blackman thinking? He was thinking about his back that turning. There's no way any experienced return man catches that ball. He calls a fair catch. He doesn't know where he is. And he just makes a mistake. Well, note that he lined up with his feet on the 10-yard line. That's what you do. But if the ball goes over your head, you don't take one step back. That's a fundamental. Well, the guy returned kicked last year. He's still a little bit out of it. He was hurting. This is a teaching moment right now. This is what it looks like when a seasoned head coach teaches a young player a fundamental. He's not yelling at him. He's not giving him grief. He's saying, look, we're going to need you. We need you to do it this way. I like how Amato is treating this. Well, Virginia Tech put together an 88-yard drive, resulting in a field goal. Let's see what NC State does starting from the one. Davis going to pass, and he's going to get hit, and it is incomplete. Nearly picked off by Miner on the far side. Nolan Burchett got to the backfield, and Davis slow to get up. Yeah, Davis got drilled. This is a very dangerous time for State. Watch Davis take a hit here. I mean, that's flush. Oh, that is <laughs> big time. And he landed on it. Well, this is dangerous, Rod. You're right. Because right now, Virginia Tech wants to force a punt, get the ball with great field position so they can get one or two first downs and hopefully get a field goal. That's the kind of game this is. Burchett, another talented defensive lineman in this game. Second down and 10. Running play this time. And Davis is belted at the line of scrimmage by Tim Sandage, who has a sack tonight as well. Third down and long. And most of the completions for Davis have been to his running backs. And their field position. Neither has been great. Not good. Started out pretty decently, but not so good lately. And right now, they're on the two-yard line. They need 15 yards to execute a regular punt. They've got to get this at least to the five-yard line. And Virginia Tech is as good as anybody at blocking punts. And they run it to try to give themselves some room, and there isn't any. A DB gets Reggie Davis, and this will bring up fourth down in a dangerous punting situation. Well, keep in mind, they believe they can return the ball against North Carolina State. Yeah, this will not be a booming punt. Right now, all State can do is just pooch it out of there so it won't get blocked, and that'll give a good opportunity for a return. Two turnovers for NC State, 0 for Virginia Tech, tied at 13, 13 30 to go in the fourth, fourth down and eight, and they set up the return. Royal at the 40. Royal trying to sprint to the outside. 
knifing through the Wolf Pack to the 20 yard line. Great return before Pat Lowry makes the tackle. We talked about Virginia Tech's prowess in terms of blocking kicks. Did you know that? That NC State has blocked more since 2000. Back to Raleigh in a moment, tied at 13. NC State, Virginia Tech tied early fourth quarter. Victims of Hurricane Katrina need your help. The American Red Cross provides disaster victims with food, shelter, clothing, counseling, and more. If you are able, please make a contribution. Contact the American Red Cross today. 1-800-HELP-NOW or redcross.org. Virginia Tech takes over on the cusp of the red zone. First down, tied at 13. And Vic with a play fake. And Vic going to the end zone. Almost caught in the redirection by Jeff King. Garland Heath on the coverage of the tight end King. It's a predetermined play to King. A jump ball to a guy who knows how to go up and get jump balls. King, the basketball player, has helped the Virginia Tech team a number of times in basketball and almost came up with that jump ball there. He joined the team last winter. Normally, football coaches don't like that, but uh, Coach Beamer was happy about that. He said it was the best thing uh, that King could have done. Second down and 10. Emo is behind Vic. It'll be Emo. Trying to pick a hole, but there isn't one there. Minimal gain to the 19-yard line. And gang tackled there. Mario Williams in there along with Hoyt. You know, Vic has been most successful in the second half running out of the shotgun, either on the quarterback draw or moving himself in position to throw. We'll see if Kevin Rogers comes back with that and give Vic a chance to create. This has been the average nine yards to go for both teams on third down. The difference is NC State has been able to convert some of those. Vic got a shotgun. Rolls to his left. And he throws a strike for a touchdown to David Clowney. And Tech takes the lead. So they put him in the shotgun and then got him out to the edge where he got a good throwing lane and then watch the accuracy. He gives it enough air and only one guy can get there to get it and that's Clowney. Extra point is good and the Hokies have scored 10 straight points and lead by a touchdown. Marcus Vick with his first touchdown pass as a starting quarterback in college football. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. Well, North Carolina State with a mistake, a fair catch at the one-yard line, and then a re punt return of about 19 yards to the 20, and then Marcus Vick with his first touchdown pass as a starting quarterback. He had a couple of TD passes two years ago and then suspended, missed all of last season. Maybe this is his coming out party in college football with his older brother Michael on hand. Tony Baker on the return for NC State. And the true freshman gets loose past the 25 out of the 27 yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown pass that Marcus Vick threw. Yes, he's talented, but watch his mechanics. This is a tough throw. He's moving to his left out of the shotgun formation. Watch him square up his shoulders and then deliver a very nicely thrown accurate ball there, Trevor. We saw him do this in practice. And offensive coordinator Brian Steinspring standing on the sideline with us told us that Marcus Vick has an uncanny knack, his words, uncanny knack for delivering an accurate pass from any angle, on the move, from his front foot, from his back foot, anywhere. First down from the NC State 27-yard line. Play fake, Davis steps up, and then the ball's loose. He got hit as he throws. It's picked up by Rouse at the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Now, this is reviewable. 
Instant replay in the ACC this year that the ruling on the field is a fumble, so there has to be conclusive evidence from the replay official upstairs to overrule the call on the field. Although maybe the officials are going to change it here. They're conferring. It was Daryl Tapp that knocked it loose and picked up by Ross for a touchdown. Officials timeout. Play is under review. So they did not change it on the field, so it's a fumble for now and being reviewed upstairs. If any part of his hand is coming forward, of his arm is coming forward, then it's an incomplete pass. And that looks to me like the arm starts forward. Yeah, yeah, his arm is coming forward. He makes a forward attempt to throw the football, and then it's knocked out. Well, it's knocked out. He was coming forward. The only argument against that is that if you can say he lost the ball and he was taking it back, but it didn't look that way. It looked like he made the forward movement with his arm. Now, that's what it looks like, but it's got to be conclusive proof. It can't just be slightly proof. Yeah. We're talking beyond a reasonable doubt, not a preponderance of the evidence. You could make the case that if this stands, then Virginia Tech's going to win the game. It'd be hard to score two touchdowns in 12 minutes. They've only scored one touchdown the entire game tonight. Remember, this is the first year that all the other conferences, with the exception of two, have instant replay, and it has to be an arm going forward to some degree, and it looked like it was, and the fans think so too, that it was an incompletion. Again, the call has to come from upstairs by the replay official, and they are reviewing it now, and then we'll make the decision whether to overturn it, but it must be conclusive yeah, yeah, they can't have to overturn doubt. it. Can't have any doubt at all. Plays governed by sideline, goal line and inline passing plays like that one, and then other infractions, including spotting of the ball, are reviewable. Yeah, things that are not reveal, re reviewable are certainly most penalties, holding, offside, pass interference, things like that. And here we go. After review, the pass. Well, incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. So that's the ruling. It's been overturned. And Chuck Amato is relieved. He may not be showing it, but because <laughs> that was a big play had it gone Frank Beamer's way. This is why I think the delays in the game due to replay are worth it. Because that would have been a touchdown for Tech. It would have put this game virtually out of reach. It's so close. But the correct call, I think, was made. Incomplete pass. Therefore, a material effect on the field was reversed to the right call. That's worth the investment. Remember, any part of the arm, if it starts the forward motion, it is considered a pass. And now we've got another stoppage. Any idea, guys, what the Hokies might be barking about other than they feel that uh, it was a fumble? I think that's their point. They didn't think it was an incomplete pass. 12 minutes, 10 seconds. So they're putting... The well, microphone man. is not working from our referee tonight. They add six seconds on the clock. And what they're doing is, because they thought that was a fumble, the clock ran during the fumble return. Since it was an incompletion, they put the clock back to where it was when the ball was incomplete. On second down, Davis, and we've got a stoppage, no play, flag down. Well, Chuck Amato was someone who was very much in favor of instant replay in the offseason. Frank Beamer, not in favor. And this one goes the way of the man who liked it. And a timeout called by Virginia Tech before the flag. Frank Beamer hasn't been happy about calls like that since he lost to USC last year. There was the pass interference call, offensive pass interference, that probably cost Virginia Tech the opportunity to knock off USC in the opening game last weekend. That is not reviewable, so even if uh, they had it last year, they wouldn't have been able to review that, but that was certainly a questionable call. USC routing Hawaii last night. Oh, they looked good, didn't they? Their defense, though, may be not as good as it's been the last couple of years, guys. Yeah, but you know what? That means they'll be in a few more shootouts, and if you're in a shootout, 
what offense do you take over Matt Leiner and Reggie Bush and the USC offense? Now, there have been some great games between these two schools and great games all over college football. The ESPN College Football Encyclopedia is the biggest, richest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. They got profiles, records, stats, fight song lyrics of all 119 Division I programs. The Ivy League schools are the most prominent historically black colleges dating back to 1869. It's available now wherever books are sold. Did you say fight song? Yeah. Come on, Trevor. You can sing the Hokey fight song, can't you? I was hoping you would, Rod. I, I, can, I can hum it. <laughs> but Foster looks like he wants to fight, period. Not about something on second down and ten. And the tight end Williams gets away from Anderson. Oh, and then he gets creamed at the 38-yard line. Roland Miner and Nolan Burchett were both down there for the Hokies. And a day of hard hits between these two speedy yet physical teams. Well, they're hitting hard. And they're <laughs> it's hard on the goal. That was just, that's the one they put. I can't even say it. That's just amazing to me. That's one of the reasons I love college football so much, so, though. These guys are so fired up. This game means so much to both teams, and they're not leaving anything behind. Anderson, another missed tackle. That's 10 by Virginia Tech tonight. NC State 5 of 11 on third down. This is a third down and one. Rolling out Davis. And incomplete off the fingertips of Reggie Davis. And it's fourth down. Davis threw that ball too hard. He had Davis out of the backfield. He had the matchup he wanted right where he needed, and if he had just floated the ball and led him there, he would have been turning up the field. But he threw it too hard. He was too close to him. And an opportunity for NC State to put Virginia Tech in bad field position. Duraney has kicked 146 yards so far tonight. Royal back to receive. Fourth down and one. 11-14 remaining. Virginia Tech on a Marcus Vick touchdown pass. Leads NC State by seven. And some movement and a penalty flag down. Hey, one thing. The ACC hasn't wasted any time getting off to a good start the opening weekend. You got this game tonight. You get Florida State, Miami tomorrow night. In primetime games, big-time teams playing. Those two teams will be playing in ABC tomorrow night. You saw on ESPN last night, Georgia Tech knock off Auburn. And on ABC, you saw Texas A&M go down to Clemson. False start was the call. So we're moving back five yards. And every yard precious at this stage of the game, right? It's the style of game. Low scoring, defense, and special teams. And it's a fake. DeJuan Morgan all the way to the 25 yard line of Virginia Tech. Trickeration by Chuck Amato. You think he doesn't enjoy that? All week long, reporters were talking to him about the special teams of Virginia Tech. He said, yeah, 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 they're the best in the world. And look at this. They bring two guys around. They get all of the Virginia Tech players caught up on the right side of the field. A little trickeration. And remember, that was after a penalty. They did that on fourth and six, and they get 44 yards and a first down at the 25-yard line of the Hokies. Reggie Davis. Penalty flag down, and so is Davis at the 21. But don't underestimate the gamesmanship because North Carolina State feel that their special teams are the best in the country. And here's the gamesmanship. Everybody talks about Virginia Tech, North Carolina State. They've blocked the most. They've pulled the trickeration. The punter fakes the kick. There's a snap. And you can almost see this coming because the, the quote that you mentioned from Chuck Amato was priceless. Reporters repeatedly asking Chuck Amato, what about Beamer Ball? What about Virginia Tech special teams? And he said, no, yeah, fine. They're not just the best in the world. They're the best in the solar system, he said. The so and that's kind of sarcastic. And I think that's part of the reason he'd come back with something like this. But guys, NC State comes right back and gets another penalty. Five yards for a legal formation. First and 15. 
And Davis to pass. He goes short to Barrett. Pull down to the 20-yard line. Got 10 back on that play. And that's what they've done all night. That's a wide receiver on a linebacker. They just send him into the middle, and he rubs off the linebacker. The linebacker can't stay with him. He can't run with the wide receiver. But see, it doesn't start that way. They don't line up the linebacker over the wide receiver. He runs all the way across the field, and when he gets into the area of the linebacker, that's when the ball is thrown. 220 yards after the catch by NC State and Mark Tressman's offense. Dressman joined the West Coast fraternity 10 years ago, replacing Mike Shanahan as the offensive coordinator in San Francisco, and Shanahan went to Denver as the head coach. Rolling out Davis, going short again. Caught by Reggie Davis, drilled at the ankle by Anderson. And that's a minimal gain there, if any. Actually, that was Williams on the catch, so it brings up third down and five. And Mark Tressman learned this offense from Bill Walsh. And he understands that if you can put a back or a wide receiver on a linebacker in a short area, you can get yards after the catch. And he scripts his plays. Learned that from Bill Walsh also. And we've seen two ways that he's done it. He's done it with formation, but he's also done it just by running over there. And when he gets close to a linebacker, the ball gets thrown. Big third down and five here at the Hokie 20. Quick drop for Davis. Flushed out. Throws back across the middle, and a couple of yards shy of the first down is Anthony Hill. Decision time. Under nine to play. Fourth down on a couple. You're down seven. What do you do, guys? Well, a field, two field goals won't help them. Two field goals won't help them. They're going to need a touchdown. But they're I think kick. they should go for it. You got eight and a half minutes to go in the ball game. You want two scores to win. Your defense is playing well. Go ahead and kick it, take your points, and play the rest of the ball game. That's what they're going to do. Duraney on for a short field goal of 35 yards. Is to pull NC State within four. Another fake, perhaps? Probably not. I don't think they're free this time. they got to kick it. Barrett gets it down. And the kick is good. So after a fake punt, it goes 44 yards. Duraney kicks a field goal, and NC State is back within four. Middle of the fourth quarter in the ACC opener on opening weekend. Wolfpack at 100yardblitz.com. Touchback as the kick sails into the end zone. Virginia Tech will take over at the 20. Marcus Vick on his last series. Through his first touchdown pass as a starting quarterback in college football. And looking at his first game as a starter, comparison with Michael, pretty close, except more rushing touchdowns for Mike, who is on hand tonight. Well, keep in mind that Michael played his first game at home in Blacksburg. This man has to play here in an ACC game on the road, hostile environment, a little tougher. Although Michael's game was his first game, Marcus did play 11 games two years ago, just never started. First down at the Hokie 20. Humes is behind Vic. Humes straight ahead. And a solid run for five yards up to the 25. Hokie's going to try to take some time off the clock here, fellas. No, they got a couple of backs who can do that. Humes is a big back, 235 pounds. He's a senior. He and Emo have their own little version of thunder and lightning. make Hume's thunder. He is a big kid, senior out of Virginia Beach. Emo, about 5'6", 190 pounds. He's not thunder. But he has laid some hits today, finishing runs. Inside handoff to Humes. And he powers past the 35 to the 36. Let's check in with Stacy Dale Schumann. Marcus Vick is a reformed individual off the field. I, I asked offensive coordinator Brian Steinspring, what should people know about Marcus Vick? He said he's a humble young man, pleasant to be around. He's learned from his mistakes, and he's particularly, guys, appreciative for the second chance to play college football at Virginia Tech. What a way to start, too, against last year's top defense in college football at NC State. From the 36-yard line. Humes again. 
could not keep the feet down at the 38 yard line a couple yards on that carry. If you're going to win championships, you have to be able to run the ball in the fourth quarter to take time off the clock. That's how you salt away a game. And right now, you see Virginia Tech trying to do that. And they're doing it with a two tight end formation to get extra blocking up there. Even though NC State is stacking the box with eight and nine man fronts, Tech is able right now to get yardage on the ground. Well, Frank Beamer has shown a lot of confidence in Marcus Vick over the last few years, and you can see why. Vick has looked very good here, very poised on the road in the second half. Emo gets whirled around and tossed aside, and the fly goes down. Might be a face mask. At the 38-yard line, Mario Williams in on the tackle. Again at halftime, Rod, a B grade for Marcus Vick. Where is it now? Well, he's doing much better in my class. You know, he's made some good plays in the second half, a great touchdown throw. He's probably at about a B plus, A minus right now. He's, he's hovering right there. How about the grade for the NC State defensive line, Trev? Has it gone up, down, stayed the same here in the second half? Certainly Virginia Tech has had more success on offense here in the second half against it. They have. I had an A plus at halftime. I give him a B plus now because Vic has been able to get out and do some damage. And in spreading the field, they've allowed... They've allowed running space inside so they could move the chains a little bit. Now, Frank Beamer, once again, the beneficiary of a penalty. That penalty was huge. That would have been third down and eight, which is very difficult to convert. Only two teams were penalized more last year than Virginia or than NC State, I should say. And 11 penalties for the Wolfpack tonight, and now it's a second and three. Clock nearing six minutes. NC State does have all three timeouts remaining. Virginia Tech with two. And they're letting the play clock wind down under 10. Emo on the carry. Cuts it back. And Emo finally dragged down to the 44-yard line. Stephen Tullock got him. It's a hokey first down in NC State territory. Well, they went with two tight ends, and they're trying to run to the lighter side. Manny Lawson, 245 speed guy. They want to go this way. That's where they want to hand because he is not the big, heavy guy that Mario Williams is on the other side at 290 pounds. You see Jason Murphy's block there on A.J. Davis just shoved him down. Number eight, Virginia Tech with national title hopes, hoping to steal a road win. On opening weekend at NC State, Dave Pass, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddish, Stacey Dale Schumann, the debut as a starting quarterback for Marcus Vick. Jay Davis, on the other hand, in his second year as a starter. Thrown an interception, two turnovers for Virginia Tech, or for NC State, rather, have been costly, and Virginia Tech calls a timeout, one remaining. Back down to the sideline while we have a moment, and Stacey Dale Schumann. Dave, one thing Coach Amato has become known for at NC State is the fact that he has what you might call a motto. Every season, he creates a word for his team with his coaching staff that they need to follow throughout the entire season. This season, the word is trust. Last year, they had some issues off the field. Perhaps the defense got a little bigger than life, if you will, and they wanted to bring it back to trust, make sure everybody was on the same page. They'll need trust right now, guys. Uh, last year, the defensive line was terrific, but they lost six games. So. Uh, Usually when you get a great pass rush, you think you're going to have a winning season, but uh, they didn't because of uh, a lot of penalties, and they did not force turnovers last year either. They're at the bottom of the country in that category. Right, and they, they had some discipline issues last season, a lot of penalties, a lot of problems, and there was a little concern in the offseason that there was too much talking by the defensive players. There was a concern that maybe the team would get a little bit divided with the defense sniping the way they were about how good they were and how ineffective the offense had been and enough of that they wanted to get them all together and have the same team with the trust model. Well Amato the teacher brought in General Hugh Shelton who's an NC State grad to speak to the team in the preseason and trust came up a number of times. A few weeks before that he brought in Lou Holtz and trust came up several times in that talk as well and so he's trying to not just say it to the team but bring in others to teach it. First down for the Hokies at the 44-yard line of NC State. They got Humes and Emo together in the backfield. And Vic to the air. And Vic is drilled, sacked. Back at the 46-yard line, Oliver Hoyt. And Hoyt 
came right up the middle. A little bit of a delayed blitz. They didn't pick him up. A delayed blitz allows everyone else to figure out who they block, and then you come a little bit later, a beat later after the blocking's committed, and Hoyt got there. Well, they had two guys trying to block McCargo, so and Hoyt was able to run free, and that's the third sack tonight for NC State. And Vic now faced with his second and 18. Inside, now it's a fake, and Vic taken off. Vic to the 40, and cut down to the 35-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Marcus Hudson makes the tackle for NC State. Is that the first time they've run that play? I haven't seen that. When he faked the handoff, they've always handed it off up until now. This time they pull it out, NC State's defense isn't ready. A little bit of Urban Meyer read option. They went down to Florida, spent some time studying what Urban Meyer did at Utah and what he took to Florida, and that's the first time we saw Michael Vick get out on the edge with that play. Gain of 17 brings up third down and one. You say Michael or Marcus? They look alike. They look a lot alike, and they play alike. At least at this stage, for Marcus compared to Michael in his junior year at Emo. Oh, great second effort. Reached over the pile and got the first down, it appears. At the 34-yard line, depends on the spot. A terrific second effort by Emo. Tyler and Hoyt tackled him. They're going to measure. Well, the spot is not generous. It's going to be close. You can see there with the yellow line how close it is. You know, looking at the field, I thought he reached it over and got it. Well, again, a spot can be reviewed, but it has to come from upstairs. There are no coaches' challenges in the ACC. So if it doesn't come from upstairs, Frank Beamer is faced with a decision. Fourth down and short at the 35. It's a long field goal. Or do you try to push it across here on fourth down? I think given where he is on the field, if it's, if it's beyond Pace's range, and I think it is, I think you go ahead and go for it. Because the, the likelihood of getting the coffin corner kick, I think, is unlikely. You might as well go ahead and take your shot here to pick up the first down. I agree. That's what they will do on fourth down and inches. Would have been a 52-yard attempt for Pace. Last time they went right over the center, 66, Will Montgomery. They did that with a quarterback, Vic. We'll see if they do it here. And Vic tries it again. And going to be close at the 34-yard line. Again, depends on the spot. Looks like he got it, but we'll see. Last time, it appeared Emo got it. And they didn't give Virginia Tech a good spot. And that's right on the line. So that is going to be a first down for the Hokies. Uh, Beamer hates the spot, but I think it's enough. They will measure again. Well, Beamer will just go nuts if they don't have this first down, but according to the line, they've got it. It is a Virginia Tech first down. And Beamer is relieved. Michael Vick, Marcus's oldest bro older brother on the sideline. Now, and the fans hoping that he didn't get it. But he did. Well, if you're NC State now, you've got to go for the strip. Because they, at the 34-yard line, they are at the outer edge of Pace's field goal range. If they move it any farther forward, then not only will they lose time on the clock, they also have a chance of putting three more points on the board. See the comparison. Mike's first game as a starter compared to Marcus tonight. Tenth play of the drive. They've chewed up four and a half minutes. Running play. Emo working his way forward to the 30-yard line. NC State might want to think about a timeout here. He's got three remaining. And there's some extracurricular activity, and that will stop the clock. Some pushing and shoving at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they break it up quickly. Well, we talked about championship teams running the ball in the fourth quarter. Taking off this time off the clock puts more pressure on State. Virginia Tech running the offense the way they need, picking up first downs and bleeding the clock. Drive has taken over five minutes now. Eleventh play coming up here. Second and six.
It's Emo, wrapped up from behind. Dropped at the 28-yard line. Tank Tyler makes the tackle. Third down is coming up. Mac Tools, U.S. Nationals coming up next here on ESPN2 and HRA. We still have at least two and a half minutes of game time to go, depending on what happens here. NC State with all of its timeouts remaining. Virginia Tech with one and a big third down here. If they don't get it, they would be somewhere between 40 and 45 yards for a field goal try. Now, this is normally a passing down at third and five. NC State will expect a run. So do you see play action in the future? Well, I think what you're going to see with, with uh, Virginia Tech is getting Marcus Vick in a position again where he can create, whether that's from the shotgun, most likely. NC State calls a timeout, so two more left for Chuck Amato, and maybe Michael is uh, going into the stands for a different seat for the final. Maybe he just can't watch down on the sidelines. <laughs> he's not signing any autographs yet. Well, he's got some guts walking into the, uh, I mean, he's still a Hokie. Uh, and there are a couple of Hokies here to congratulate there. him. It took a minute for them to figure out he was walking up the stairs, but as soon as they did, here they come. He's in the Virginia Tech section, so he should be safe. But there were a few uh, NC State fans that he walked by, and that might be a little dangerous here on the road. But yeah, who doesn't like Mike? You know, that's a good thing he's safe in the Virginia Tech section. That's actually really nice that he trusts those fans that for a couple of years. No, no, no. Look, you got a state fan looking, reaching out for a handshake. Yeah, now you're getting back into mixed territory. You got state on one side, tech on the other. But he was protected by his people. That's a, that was a smart move to walk up that part of the stands. Maybe he's leaving the stadium altogether. Maybe he can't bear to watch here. Third down and four. Guys in the truck, go see if he wants a seat in there. And Marcus's younger brother making his first start. Suspended last year. Two arrests in a three-month period. And academically, athletically suspended. Spent a lot of time with Michael in Atlanta watching film. Frank Beamer named Vic the starting quarterback after spring practice. He started spring as a number three quarterback. But he worked his way into the lineup and has won the respect of his teammates by his hard work and attitude. And he's winning their respect even more so with his play tonight. And a big third down and four here for Vic. Instead, it's Emo on the carry, and he's not going to get it. Stacked up at the 28-yard line. Tyler and Hoyt teaming up to make the stop for NC State, and another timeout is called. Well, that tells you how much faith and confidence Frank Beamer has in Brandon Pace, his field goal kicker, and his defense. He's quite content to kick the field goal, go up by seven, and turn the game over to his defense. That's been a theme of this game. Know who you are. Know why you win. Know how you're built. Be sound on defense and special teams and protect the football on offense. Let the defense and special teams win for you. Well, at some point in the future, Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden are not going to be coaching. Who will be at the top of the list in wins? Bobby Bowden is 351, Paterno 343, and among active coaches, you got Beamer and Trestle up there. Fisher DeBerry is up there as well. But who are the next great legendary coaches after Paterno and Bowden hang it up? Well, I think there are a few of them that you can you can put in that category or are likely to get in that category. I think, you know, you've got Phil Fulmer at Tennessee. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at guys who have a long tenure someplace and they've won. You know, Mike Bellotti out at Oregon, long tenure, he's won. And then Matt Brown at Texas. You know, Matt's been around for a while, long tenure there. You know, he's winning. So I think those are the guys, along with Fisher DeBerry, that might be considered the next group of legends. But I think when Paterno and Bowden do retire, you have to put Beamer at the top of the list. He arrived here almost 20 years ago to a program that, that was really starting from almost scratch from a standpoint of, of national recognition. And he's gone to 12 straight bowl games, won the conference championship last year. Tonight, Pace is two for two, but last year he missed two, including a 43-yarder late in the game. This is a 46-yard attempt. Try to extend the lead to seven points. No good. There is a penalty flag down, and Pace may have been run into. 
It's fourth and five, so it's a five-yard penalty. It'll be awfully close to the marker. It might give the Hokies a first down. Wow. It's been a theme all night long for North Carolina State. Undisciplined. Oh, oh he just lost his footing. Hey, that one, he just lost his footing. That's a very, very cheap call. Well, he, yeah, he ran into him. A model can't believe it. That's a that's a cheap one. Remember, running is five yards, roughing is 15. That has to be running. I don't know how that can be roughing the kicker. You know the penalties that running into the kicker. Let's see what they spot. Number one on the defense, five yards. First down. It is a first down, so it would have been past wow. the marker, and that's the 12th penalty tonight on the third most penalized team in college football a year ago. Last year, they were very undisciplined. Lots of penalties. Almost the worst in Division 1A. 9.2 a game. And NC State only has one timeout remaining. That's a tough, tough call, though. Emo going nowhere. But again, time is not the friend of the Wolfpack who are going to call their final timeout. Uh, even if they get the ball back, they're not going to have a lot of time. All right, that was a tough call on that running into the kicker, but the penalties for North Carolina State today have seemed to come at the worst possible times on third and long to give them a first down. But you know, you would drive, or like right there, which gives them a first down I, after a missed field. I, I'm with you, but you hate to see officials determine the outcome of a game. The kick had already been made, it was missed. And, and the players could decide it. And now you have a guy who lost his footing and he runs into the kicker. And now because of that, you've determined the outcome of the game. Yeah, although from the official standpoint, he was in a very difficult position because he clearly ran into the kicker. It's just that he did it with slipping. But if the official does not was make that or call, <laughs> if the official does not make that call, you could make the opposite argument that, hey, that should have been a penalty. Why didn't you give that to Virginia Tech? They had no impact on the play. Don't forget, coming up next, Mac Tools U.S. Nationals on ESPN2. Marcus Hudson, one of those uh, nine married players for NC State, has a son. Chuck Amato watching is going to be tough for his team to get the football back with a lot of time. First, they got to hold Virginia Tech on second and 11 and then on third down and force another field goal. The very poised Marcus Vick under center. And Vick saw that there's nothing there and goes down to the 32 and now they're pushed further out of field goal range. Don't know how much that matters at this stage but it's still lost yardage. And still a very smart play by Marcus Vick not to be in the position where he could fumble and lose the ball or something. He just went ahead and took the loss because they, they control the clock right now. They control everything in the ball game. Rod, you talked about Vic being patient at the very beginning of the game. Has he been patient to you? Absolutely. And that play was indicative of it. Trying to get the play off is Vic. He does. On third down and 17, Emo. And it will be a 49 or 50 yard field goal. Oki still have a timeout left, so they can let this thing wind down under a minute to go and then call time. And if, whether they make the field goal or not, Virginia Tech will come back on defense, and NC State will have about 50 seconds or so, probably. Vic with 31 yards rushing, 108 yards passing, but those numbers don't do justice to what he's done here in the second half. Well, the first half... He was not that effective running the ball. It was the third quarter and the first long drive where they got the field goal that really showed some of his running ability. He made a couple of key runs on third down. But Rod, you know what impresses me most is not what he did do, but what he did. No turnovers from Michael Mar Marcus Vick. Virginia Tech guys elects to hang on to that timeout and take the penalty. And then they're going to punt it away. So they're going to try to pin him deep instead of attempting a field goal. Try to pin NC State deep. And you would imagine that the Wolfpack will send 11 at the punter. 
Well, this is good. Pace's range is the 34-yard line. They're on the 37 right now. NC State only sending four guys. And it's a quick kick. And a roll into the end zone. 39 seconds remaining for North Carolina State. Trailing by four. Nick Schmidt did a good job there. Just uh, trickled into the end zone. No timeouts remaining for Chuck Amato's squad. It's a very tough spot to be in. You got a long way to go, and you're facing a very tough defense that can put pressure on you. You've got a very good secondary, perhaps the best defensive back in the country playing on the left side for Virginia Tech from Jimmy Williams. When college basketball coaches get down to crunch time, they rip off the sport coats. Amato's got the sunglasses off here. Late in the game, hoping his team can come down the field and get a touchdown. And Davis nearly has it picked off by Rouse, who had one earlier in the game. Well, there's an interesting matchup right now. The fastest receiver and their best playmaker is number 21, Tremaine Hall. That play, he was covered man for man by Tech's best cover guy, number two, Jimmy Williams. Let's see if they have that matchup set up again, and let's see if Davis goes that way. Davis standing at the 15-yard line on second and 10. Tech rushes four. Davis being chased. And it's stripped away at the last second incomplete. Rouse again makes another play. Rouse with a pick, a forced fumble, a handful of tackles, and now a pass breakup. That pass intended for T.J. Williams. Well, now Davis can only throw the ball up for grabs. Virginia Tech is playing awfully deep. Three or four guys hanging back about 25, 30 yards deep. And Davis doesn't have a cannon of an arm. I mean, he's not going to be able to get it out there 60 yards. NC State was uh, crushing Virginia Tech in time of possession, but seven and a half minutes went off that last drive for the Hokies, even though they didn't get any points. They were also helped by that penalty running into the kicker. Davis on third and 10. Hit as he releases it. Caught him across the middle. Hall is free. And Hall scoots out of play at the 48-yard line with 20 seconds remaining. Well, that time they had zone coverage. Jimmy Williams was not locked up man on Tremaine Hall. He lined up in the slot on the left, ran straight up through the seam of that zone. Davis did a really nice job. He's right here. And Davis does a great job of finding him in that scene. And after that, it's all about Tremaine Hall, who calls himself Tremaine Event. Now watch him. He doesn't do anything. He just runs straight up the field, says, hey, there's a big hole here. Throw me the ball. 32-yard play, 247 yards after the catch for NC State. Out of timeouts, 20 seconds left at the 48 of the Hokies. Davis has time, and the pass is incomplete. They're trying to pick up first downs to stop the clock and get close enough to launch one into the end zone. Well, at this point, They've got two plays, maybe three. And they can't go to the middle of the field unless it's a first down. Well, they really aren't able to get to the sideline because Virginia Tech is taking away the sideline routes by alignment. Hokies have four guys deep, about 15 yards. Second down. Davis goes middle. And a little trickery. They've got to get out of bounds. They do. At the 35-yard line, Blackman. A couple of laterals, it looked like, on that play. Seven seconds left. Do they have enough for two plays, or is this it? There's a little trickeration to give them a shot. All they need now is the Stanford band out there with a play like that. That's two <laughs> laterals. Oh, hurt me. I've seen one lateral, but that's, a, that's good. What do you do here, guys? He's, He's got to go end zone, right? Yeah, he doesn't have time to do anything else. He's got to get it into the end zone. Seven seconds left. What could be the final play? Davis going over the middle. Receiver down there. Instead, it's picked off by who else? Aaron Rouse, his second interception of the night. And that wins the game for Frank Beamer and the Virginia Tech Hokies as they knock off Jay Davis in the Wolfpack. Is what Davis sees. He has no choice but to get the ball down the field as far as he can. Didn't see Rouse, who was hanging back around the goal line. Nice pickoff for him. 
And Rouse did a good job of reading his eyes. He was looking at his playmaker, Tremaine Hall, the whole way. Rouse was looking at Davis the whole way. Two interceptions for Rouse. And Virginia Tech keeps its hopes of a national championship alive, winning its opener at NC State, the only team to beat the Hokies in the ACC a year ago. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Trevor Maddich, Stacey Dale Schumann, and Rod Gilmore, I'm Dave Pash. Thanks for watching. Mac Tools U.S. Nationals coming up next.